Thank you everybody for coming this afternoon. We're gonna call this meeting to order for the Northampton License Commission. Wednesday, September 18th at 4 p.m. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Jennifer Ewers and Helen Kahn. This meeting is being Zoom recorded and we are going to start with public comment. And I see we have a lot of people in the room today. So um, you can raise your Zoom hand. Annie is gonna go through the hands and when it's your turn to speak. Just state your name for the record and try and remember you have three minutes to speak. So we will get started then with public comment. Annie, do you see some Zoom hands? I, I see, see, yep, we see one. I see one, yes. Yep, okay. And I will start the timer now. Can you can can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, uh, my name is Fabio Dallorto. I'm a resident in Florence, uh, just behind uh, Miss Florence Steiner, and I wanted to give my my comment about uh, this proposal to change the license of uh, the entertainment for Miss Florence Steiner. <laughs> uh, oh. We discussion three years ago. About. Fabio, can I? I want. I just want to hold you for one second. Administratively, pause the time. Annie, um, should item people speaking to items thirteen and fourteen wait until the hearings? Yes, because okay. there will be there they'll have their own chance for public comment. Okay, for... I'm sorry for everybody. That was my mistake. If you're here to speak to items thirteen or fourteen, please wait until that time because you will have the opportunity for public comment then. If you're here for any other agenda item um, that is not a hearing, then we are here to see what you have to say. So Fabio will hear from you shortly. Okay, so Annie's gonna go through the hands and um, we'll get started, restarted with public comment. Barbara Jean. Um, can you remind us what 13 and 14 are? I wanted to comment on um, the strong, summer on strong. We're happy to hear from you now. 13 and 14 are regarding Ms. Flo's diner in Florence. Okay, um, I, I just wanted to say that I think the Summer and Strong has been a really vibrant part of the town and, and um, have heard for many years that the town really likes to focus on the pedestrian aspect and um, and the music and all the nights that I've been there, the music hasn't been loud. It's been very, very soft. I don't know if the, some of the volume comes from people eating in the street, but I want um, to advocate for keeping Summer on Strong, because I think it's a very wonderful community program. And I'm sorry that it's made a few people unhappy, but <clears throat> I just want to um, support it and say that it's done a lot for the community as a whole and also for music locally, and also um, for the restaurants and all of the walkers. And we, we've we always wanted to have kind of an over the years, Northampton, it's tried different areas, pavilion type areas where people could sit and talk and chat. And that one I think has been very successful. So. That's that's my comment. I'm really hoping that you will keep it. Thank you. Um, I see a physical hand, um, Karim. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, I also am a big fan and supporter of Summer on Strong. Sorry, uh, can you state your name? Your sorry, Karim May. I live at 20 Strong Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm also a big fan of Summer on Strong. Um, it was born out of COVID during the pandemic. We couldn't eat inside the restaurants. We were all freaked out and scared and unhappy, and we wanted to help the restaurants survive. And we owe Deb and Danny and the city and many others deep thanks for the hard work that they did to bring this really great event into existence. I've been a fan of it from the beginning. But we weren't thinking about it long term when we started and we had no idea what it was going to become. And if this is going to now become a permanent feature of the city, we need to go back to first principles and make sure that all interests are represented. The restaurants are open again, and Strong Avenue is a residential street as well as a commercial one. At first, it was a three nights of music, now then four, now five, 
and instead of light music to accompany the outdoor dining, it has morphed into a five nights a week concert venue with bands booked by a promoter rolling in large amplifiers every night, 35 feet from my living room and other residences. Some nights it isn't too loud, but other nights it can be really loud, loud enough that I can't have online work meetings after five o'clock, which I often need to, and can't have a quiet dinner sometimes with my daughter. So please just take a moment and imagine having a vacuum cleaner that you can't turn off running during dinner in your dining room all summer long. I am not trying to spoil the party. I'm just asking that you recognize that some of us don't have the option to leave the party. I'm just asking that the residents be slightly more considerate neighbors. The 2024 license stated that, that as a condition of the license, that they be a responsible neighbor and that the licensee be responsible for ensuring that the noise is not unreasonable and not a nuisance. But the license didn't provide any specifics related to those requirements. And I have been asking nicely over the years and it hasn't gotten me anywhere with respect to the volume. So my appeal to the commission is this, most of the licenses you grant are one-offs, one day, one afternoon, small things. If you're gonna grant an entertainment license of this duration, all summer long, every summer, five nights a week, this close to people's homes, uh, I very respectfully request that it ought to come with specific limits on the volume that um, the licensee as the one who is using, asking to use the public space for these commercial purposes, be required to monitor and enforce those volumes. I don't want Summer on Strong to go away. I love it too. All I'm asking is that they be considerate neighbors and turn the music down a little bit relative to what we've been experiencing the past few years. Thank you very much for your consideration. Okay, thank you. I think I see another physical hand, Mary. Can you hear me? Yes, please state Hi. your name. My name is Mary Witt, W-I-T-T, -T, and I'm one of the musicians at Summer on Strong. I don't think that uh, either of my two groups that have performed there are loud. Um, but in light of all of the discussion here, especially the man who just talked about living there, um, maybe there's a way for someone to be in charge of volume control because every I've had a band for 30 years and every gig we do, we say to our clients or hosts, just let us know if we're too loud. And mostly they don't. And if they do, we turn down. Um, we never want to be too loud because music isn't better when it's loud. It's just louder. So I think, you know, I, I love Summer on Strong both as an attendee and as a musician participant. And I would really like to see it continue. I think it's an amazing way to get people outside in the summer and eating and supporting restaurants and musicians and everything about it. It's just a highlight. It's been a highlight of life in Northampton the last few years, especially with so many empty storefronts and restaurants that, you know, are discouraging. This has been a really a beautiful spot um, in our environment. So I would think that there would be a way for a person or a group of people um, to be in charge of volume. And maybe they use a decibel meter or maybe they just say what they think. But um, that all the musicians would be told ahead of time there is a person in charge of volume. And if they ask you to turn down or if they say, you know, the bass is too loud. I'm a bass player, so I can say that um, or the vo the vocals are too loud or whatever, then the, the musicians have to be willing to cooperate with that. Otherwise, they don't get rebooked because the whole point of it is for it to be a community event. And I think it's an amazing community event and I really want to see it continue. Thank you. Okay, I see another physical hand, Paul. Hi, 
Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Paul Arslanian, and I'm the pianist and sort of leader of the Green Street Trio. And we've been playing there every Sunday this year. And we've actually uh, uh, played there every year. Uh, the first two years, we played every Wednesday, I think. And then uh, periodically last year. And then now we did every Sunday. Um, and over the last maybe four or five times, uh, we've been aware of uh, the volume issue. We, again, like Mary said, uh, I, I really heartily support everything she said about musicians. Uh, we especially want to be part of the environment. So if we're too loud, people can't talk, they can't socialize and communicate with each other. We're very happy to turn down. And so for the last four, five, six times when we were aware of uh, the volume level being an issue, uh, we happily turned down and we're actually playing at quite a, a comfortable, quiet level. And we do check with the audience each time to uh, make sure of that. So I think that's a, a wonderful suggestion to have someone, some way of monitoring every band and have a person that can say, uh, with authority, you must turn down to a certain level, you know, turn it down, uh, or you can't come back, that kind of thing. Uh, we've even really enjoyed playing there. We have a huge community of people that, that come out and support us and support um, the local retailers there and the restaurants. So uh, uh, I'm willing to compromise as much as needed to make the thing keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else? I see three hands oh, raised. Okay. Um... Hi, I'm Naima. Um, Naima Workman. Um, so, Brandon, you can also see Brandon and I. Brandon's on the call as well. Hi. <laughs> we are uh, the owners of Shiva Shakti Power Yoga, which is at 17 Strong F. And um, we've we've had honestly it's been extremely challenging um over the past couple years the first year wasn't so bad there wasn't as much music but it's gotten to the point that it's five nights a week um every summer so for three months out of the year five nights a week we have music playing directly outside of our studio and um it's sometimes it's not that loud it's not that disruptive most of the time it's disruptive being the placement of it um the kind of music and it's just been very frustrating to deal with because the times when it has been extremely loud i even got a decibel measurer so we're talking 85 plus decibels which is the point at which you're getting hearing damage um playing directly outside of our business and really interfering with our ability to hold our classes so I also love Summer and Strong. I love the whole concept, but in practice, the music has been, there's some music which seems appropriate for the context that, it, that it's in, other music where it seems more appropriate for like a rock venue, like people just want to blast their music as loud as they can. And um, so what that means in practice is if anytime we've tried to talk to the people playing, talk to the musicians, if they are loud, they've typically been very dismissive and really generally um, not that considerate for the space and the context in which they're playing. So um, specifically for us in particular, I'd really like to move the music down the street closer to um, the parking lot because honestly, right in front of our studio is just really disruptive. And it's not something that anybody really checked in with us. Like, is this okay if you have live music in front of your yoga studio five nights a week? It was never checked in with us. We never approved it. We never gave consent. We've been in this spot for 16 years plus. And um, there's just got to be a, a better way to have this set up so that it's not interfering with us literally three months out of the year. And like, I don't know who I talked to about that, like, but that's why we're at this meeting to try and see like what can be done about making this workable for the businesses, you know, for the non restaurant businesses on the street. 
Thank you. I see a John. Hi, my name is John Kaban, and I've been doing Summer on Strong for, I want to say, probably going on five years plus. And I play with Mary, and I also play with um, my friend Jared Quinn, my son, and a few different projects. Um, I think the booking uh, question is is important because there have been bands, some young bands, who look at it as um, – as was mentioned, is more of a concert. Like we're playing in Northampton town. It's like, it's not about that. I think one way that would, which would help simplify the, um, the concept is, I don't want to say no drums because a, a drummer who is professional and can play the room, play the area correctly would work. But I think the whole thing with like bashing cymbals that gets in the way, because that's in, like bass again, that the frequency is low. It doesn't conjure up too much craziness. But when you're getting in the vocal range, loud vocals and loud cymbals bashing, that gets very toxic very quick and can get into people's vibe like nothing else. So I think the the adage is like either we take a more percussive approach with like Tony Silva, who's online here as well. He has a beautiful trio. The percussionist plays the cajon. He, his frequency is lower. They play at a perfect, uh, at a good volume. That's what needs to be mandated. And anybody who played that had an issue should definitely not be hired back. And um, I like the idea of have, having someone, excuse me, having someone moderate it. But then that is another mouth to feed because that's five nights a week um, every summer. That being said, um, Summer and Strong has been great. It's a wonderful community event, and I'm really hoping that we can move forward with it um, in some capacity with with those things um, aligned. But I think a lot of it is like, you know, young drummers, young bands who are just don't understand that it's a background music dinner gig versus their chance to do a rock concert for all their friends right in town and grab some beers. It's like, that's what they do over at, um, you know, at, at the brewery, which is great, but it's a different gig. It's a different neighborhood. It's a different vibe. There's not a parking lot right next door. There's not a parking garage right next door that can just deal with the sound anyway. But that's my two cents. Thank you very much. And I really hope that um, that it can, can, can continue because it's been a beautiful, uh, beautiful event every year. Thanks. Thank you, John. Let's see. Geo. Hello? Hi. Can you? Hi. Okay. I You're... was asked to unmute. I did. Okay, great. Your three minutes starts now if you take okay. your name. Uh, my name's George Kay. I'm the bassist with the Green Street Trio with Paul. <clears throat> and I know that we've really, we've done our best to keep the volume levels low. And that includes the, uh, you know, the PA. Our drummer respects that. He plays with brushes when he can. I think one thing that could be done with the gazebo is there could be some treatment to that to absorb some of the sound. Now, it's not going to work if somebody comes in with big amplifiers and wants to rock out. That seems to be the sound, the type of event that is the worst. I don't think we're that loud and we are trying to uh, fit in there. I could, so I think there's treatment that can be done to the gazebo roof inside. We cut down the, um, the intensity of the drums and the sound of the cymbals for sure. The other thing is, I just want to say that uh, it, it's an important gig to us. Uh, to be able to play every week is really important as an artist. To have some place where you have can do something uh, uh, that you can count on having a place to perform. Because this, for us, this is not just go in and play the tunes by rote. This is for us, this is an art form. 
well, we have to pay attention to each other. We have a different guest artist. And if, if you don't do it, it's like you're like shooting foul shots in the backyard of, uh, you know, of your basketball uh, basket. Uh, it's a game. It, so it's been very valuable to me and I know to our group and the guests that have come in and, and played. And I know we have been very careful about uh, keeping the sound levels down. So uh, like I say, I'm available if you want to do something about the roof on that uh, gazebo. And because uh, I've built several recording studios in the past, I, I kind of have, uh, I know about that stuff. So thank you. Thank you, George. Let's see. Um, Juan. Hello there. My name is Juan, and I play uh, with a local band, Nectar, that played at Summer on Strong this summer. We had a great time. Uh, the feedback after the performance uh, from uh, the owner of the restaurant was positive about our volume level, that we were not disruptive. And um, I think the solution to some of the volume issues would be curating the, the bands that are chosen more carefully. Uh, I think simply by paying close attention to that, and again, not inviting back people that are treating the performance inappropriately will help tremendously. Um, I also want to speak in advocacy for the event. It's a beautiful event that brings the whole community together. I have young children and they come and they run around and the space there is beautiful for them. It's like a, it's like a, the whole town comes together of all ages. It's a wonderful space to experience music in the round. Um, it builds community, it builds connections between the businesses. Uh, it's a lovely thing that we all cherish. I know all the musicians here are here to say the same thing. So uh, yeah, I, I think the family aspect is really valuable too. Thank you, Juan. Let's see. Kevin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Roy. I live at 32 and 36 Strong Ave. Um, and uh, I just, first of all, wanted to say uh, thank you to all the people who have put so much time and effort into making this event happen. Um, and while it's true that it did start out of COVID, I think it's important to keep in mind the level and extent to which it's important to the community here to have this as an ongoing proposition. Um, similar to what the gen uh, just said, um, there's a direct link between their music playing and the amount of people who come and the amount of people who frequent the restaurants, um, not just on this block, but in Northampton generally. And as most of us know, especially those that live downtown, um, there are a lot of um, negative issues with respect to vacancies um, and, and other items that could be addressed. And I don't think this is a place to go there um, in terms of trying to, um, to anyway, sorry, I, I withdraw that. I just want to say that there's a direct link between them, the music being played and the amount of people and the success of Strong Out. I think to some extent, I live here, so I know too, and I've spoken with two of my other neighbors. So uh, um, I, to some extent, they've sent an email to me to represent the fact that Everyone on our block, aside from Karen, um, wants this as an ongoing proposition and does not have a particular issue with the, the sound, um, to be honest. Um, there are times when I don't even know if it's happening and I open the window just to see if someone's playing. And if you take a walk at any point in the course of the summer in the back of the, the row of condos um, on the bike path, you barely hear it. Um, and so this notion that it's a five night a week rock concert um, I think is incredibly overstated um, because there's one or two bad apples should not realign the whole uh, kit and caboodle from my perspective. And I don't disagree with other people's um, comments about mitigation if there's, you know, a bad apple. But for the most part, it's been pretty reasonable. And I think that there was a conscious effort made to invite people who were more in keeping with this type of event than there had been in previous years by getting a producer and saying we don't want people who are going to be you know, too loud or otherwise, and playing genres of music that are pretty, um, you know, such as the jazz, there's a lot of acoustic folk um, and things of that nature. And those genres of music are perfectly fine and appropriate. 
Um, so I, for one, would be incredibly disappointed if we start to upend something that's now one of the more positive attributes um, of downtown Northampton. Uh, I should remind and you know, my perspective is a little different. I don't think it's like a burden that it's three months a year. I think it's only three months a year. Um, and I think a lot of my neighbors agree. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to speak in support of continuing this. Um, again, not too much to comment about the, those operations, but I, I simply do not hear the music that loudly, nor do, and one of my neighbors is right in front of it, uh, nor do most of my neighbors for, for any um, real issue or concern. Uh, on the, I see people shaking their head on the condo side of the street. Um, That's time. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon, actually, I'm sorry, I need to go by the Zoom hands, so Ruth. Thanks, Annie. Um, I just, I, I have to say that um, hearing the comments from the musicians, from the business owners, from the residents, uh, from those of us that enjoy the music, I'm very en encouraged. I, I feel that we can work together um, to come up with uh, solutions that are reasonable for the musicians, that are reasonable for the people that live or work on the street, and that are reasonable for the restaurateurs and the audience members. And I think, um, you know, coming out, this is, I think it's a very productive conversation, which I, which I embrace. And I think coming out of this, we have a very strong chance of being able to take some of these ideas and and work them into a summer on strong next year that's that is that 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 works for next year and for years many years to come because it is as everyone is saying it's an incredibly important aspect of northampton that has put northampton back on the map to a certain degree and um, I'm encouraged that even those folks that feel that the music can be too loud, they still say, we love Summer on Strong. We're supportive of Summer on Strong. We just need to work to make it better for all of us. And um, so I'm, I just want to thank everyone for that attitude and that desire to work together and um, you know, sign me up to help make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, Brandon. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm the other owner of Shiva Shakti, um, the Power Yoga Studio on, on Strong Ave. And um, Can I'm you just really state your first and last name for the record. Brandon Pompignoni. And I'm heartbroken because we've been there for 17 years and they're putting the band right literally 12 feet outside our door. Like, I can't say enough, I've been waiting for this meeting for so long to talk to people because I, I feel like um, completely like, like we don't exist. And um, I, like, I like Summer on Strong. I think it's, it's beautiful. I like the music too, I'm a big musician, but um, it just interrupted our business for the last three years and we've been cool for the last three years. And now it's just, it's just taken over the summer nights at our studio. And it's, um, it's really, really upsetting. And um, all I would suggest is that they move the music down and, and do volume control. I would really appreciate that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Do you see other hands, Annie? I'm looking. I do, Leah. All right, can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. yes. My name's Leah Kunkel and I'm a downtown business owner. And I just wanted to say the unfortunate thing is that one, and I'm also a recovering musician, mm -hmm. is that the bandstand and that gazebo, as well as the speakers literally are not only right outside the yoga studio door, but face there. There couldn't be any other place on that street in which the music is directed more. And I had suggested that uh, that the gazebo or the music stage could definitely be relocated. It could be down again. I thought the idea of having it closer to the uh, the parking lot next to the East Side Grill is a great idea. And um, and also, I was under the impression that uh, music out there ends at eight o'clock at night, 
And so aside from, I think it's a good idea to uh, hire appropriate bands, you know, and, and appropriate acts for that space. It also seems, you know, very reasonable to say at eight o'clock it stops. Anything that I've been to always does stop by 8 p.m. Um, so I think, you know, it's it's probably not a great venue for rock bands and dances and stuff like that. But I think generally everything I've been to has been uh, definitely under control. And um, I just wanted to offer that I think maybe by relocating where the music is so it's not right in the center um, where it is and monitoring the sound and hiring appropriate bands, but also making sure the music stops at 8 p.m. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Leah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Robbie, I see you over here. Go ahead, Robbie. Thank you, Annie. Um, I just want to say thank you to, um, first of all, everybody that's helped create this. Our sponsors, thank you to the city. Thank you to the people that physically come out and do the labor that sets it up, takes it down every year. And thank you to everybody that enjoys it. Um, I think it's time that Summer on Strong get a committee to take all of the ideas into consideration, anything to keep it moving forward. And so that this thing can continue to grow in the future. I think it needs a group of people to help this thing. I think it needs a group of people that say okay on who does, who doesn't play. Um, people that we've had issues with in the past, they don't come back. Um, I think it's about time that maybe like more hands need to be involved in the curating of what goes on in Summer on Strong. Um, I think it also helped to be able to get music, um, things other than just music, um, Originally, we kind of envisioned maybe there can be an art walk or there can be other things that are going on in the street to make it usable not only at night but during the day and to to open the space up for even more things is what we honestly originally envisioned anyway. So um, I think it would be awesome to be able to talk about creating like a committee or something that can you know keep an eye on this thing and keep it moving forward in the future, get more minds involved in, in more people's times and making sure that this thing can continue to live on. And again, I just wanted to say, Thank you to everybody, everybody involved, and um, thank you for everybody that showed up today. Thank you, Robbie. Um, I see Kevin Quinn has his hand up. Oh, I missed that. It's a human hand, not a Zoom. Go ahead, Kevin. All right, Thanks, thank Randy. you. Um, I apologize for, for coming in late. Um, Can you just Ethan, state your name for the record, please? Sure. It's, a, it's attorney Kevin Quinn. Um, I'm a business owner in East Hampton, um, but we are supporters um, of the Summer on Strong for the last couple of years. The only thing I really want to say is that trying to figure out the difference between a city just being a place that has shops and restaurants and people go to for necessity and being a place that thrives, that has a heartbeat that is growing and energetic. Is the difference between a destination, a place in our hearts, a place that's really vital to the business owners and to the residents and to the visitors. And Summer on Strong represents that to me. The reason we support it is because it adds to vitality. It adds to that X factor that is thriving. And so my pledge 
is yes, we divert some traffic. Yes, some of the business owners on the street might have to deal with the diversion of traffic. And after hours, some music and some residents might not like every band that shows up, but we're a community. And being a community is everybody gives a little to get something bigger. What we get is a thriving, vital downtown. And it is priceless. It's priceless. We moved here 40 years ago when Northampton was really struggling. It was really, really struggling. I don't want to go back there. And so I like Ruppy's idea of kind of a standing committee. What can we do to keep it exciting? Listen to, hear, adjust for neighbors, adjust for residents, adjust for business owners, but with the idea of what's going to make this really create that thriving, energetic downtown in our summer times. And that's the only thing I want to. That's add. time. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Casey. Hey, how are you? Um, my name is Casey Aubrey from Lucky Duck Vending. Um, I apologize for getting on late. I thought this meeting started at 4.30. Um, I'm here for the Mochi Nut license. Yes, we haven't gotten that far on the agenda yet. We're still, um, we, ha we haven't gone through public comment yet. So okay, I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, is that it? Oh, Jillian, I see you. Let's go for it. I cannot figure out how to wave. I apologize. So thank you for finding me. Um, my name is Jillian Duclos. I'm the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. Um, and I just want to echo some of the comments um, about collaboration on this project. Um, I think it's something great that a few people worked really hard to put together. Um, I think it's hard to be a business owner day to day as it is and to envision something like this and build it and bring it forward in the way that um, very few people have done is really an amazing feat. And I think that things do shift. It did come at a perfect time in COVID. We are now out of COVID. Um, definitely time to you know, re-envision what that might look like. Um, but I did want to echo that in that the burden that falls on the very few with trying to drive something so big um, has been really hard. I came on to help support it this year. And even with the DNA and the few people that are running it, it's been really hard to manage expectations and to help, you know, people realize all the things they'd like to see. Um, so I hope that's a process that we consider. Um, I'm all for collaboration um, and also understanding that we all need to move and shift to, to meet the moment. How can we do that and how can we figure that out together? So um, I really appreciate everybody coming together um, and talking about it in this way today because it really is an important um, economic driver for downtown and something that really makes Northampton a destination in ways that other communities you know, we don't see in other communities. So thank you to everybody who is here and is willing to work on it. Thank you, Jillian. And let's see. That might be everybody. Okay. Let me know when you're sure. Let me just look again. Yep, I think that's everyone. Okay, excellent. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for your comments. Much appreciated.
Moving on to agenda item number three, we have an application for a short-term liquor license for the Northampton Center for the Arts Incorporated, 33 Holly Street, Saturday, September 28th from 8 to 11 p.m. This is for a party for the people and a wine and malt license is being sought and a fee waiver requested. And do we have someone here from the Academy? For the Center for the Arts? The Academy, sorry, um, Center, yeah, Holly Street. I so it's not Joanna. Joanna left. It's someone. Oh, is it new. Heather? Heather's waving. Is it Heather? It's okay, Heather. okay. I, it was either Heather or oops, Heather or, or Kelly. Kelly. Um, Heather. Why can't I find Heather? Oh, here she is. Okay, sorry. Hi. Um, my Hello. name's. Hi. Nice to meet everyone. I'm Heather Jeffrey. I am the co-director of the Northampton Center for the Arts, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the short-term liquor license we're asking in the um, waiver request for waiving the fee. Excellent. Um, this is a yearly event, right? Have you, did you do this one last year? I don't believe we did. I'm, I'm three weeks in, so okay. I don't... I don't believe we did. Um, we do another event that's a yearly event. Um, yep. that's called Revelry, and that. Okay, happens. right. Yeah, this is specifically for our community fund, and so that's the fund that we um grow and use in order to subsidize people's ticket prices or people's participation in workshops and events. So it's the fund that we have set up and has been set up for a long time that we constantly are refreshing that allows people to attend who might not be able to afford otherwise. Right. Great. Wonderful. Well, first, welcome. Thank your, you. I'm happy to be here. And to your first meeting um, with us anyways. Um, are you setting up in the, the same locations where events are typically set up for? Yeah, we'll. so we'll be setting up. It, the event itself is happening in the flex room of 33 Holly. And there's the concession stand. And that's where the alcohol will be available at. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I don't have any questions. I see that all documents are submitted and I know you've done these sort of events before, not you specifically, but the organization has. So I don't have any concerns. I also don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay, great. Then uh, if we're all set, unless you have something else to add, Heather. No, thank you. Okay, great. Then uh, we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term short liquor license for Northampton Center of the Arts as detailed on item three of the agenda. And the fee waiver. Oh, and um, uh, make a motion to approve the fee waiver. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, thank you, Heather. Thank you so much. Item number four, we have application for a short-term liquor license for Pioneer Valley Racing Incorporated for Sunday, October 20th, 9, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is the Happy Valley Half Marathon and 5K, and it is a wine and malt license being sought. And hello. So, oh, do you see somebody? Oh, okay, Megan, okay, great. Sorry, I couldn't change. I couldn't figure out how to change my name on here. I'm I'm Justin. Hello, how are you? Good. How's it going? Good. Are you ready for another race this year? Yes, our eighth year. Yep. Yep. Any changes to how you're setting up or conducting things? No, it's exactly the same. Same vendors, same location. Everything's same timing. Great. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you guys have any thoughts or questions? No questions. No questions. No, we haven't had any problems with this in the past. Yep. You, you get to your eighth year and we can move this along pretty quickly, Justin. <laughs> so, Sounds good. <laughs> so unless you wanted to add something else, we'll, we'll make the motion. All set on our end, I think. You're all set. Okay, great. Then we're ready for a motion. I move to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for Pioneer, Pioneer Valley Racing as detailed in item four of the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Item number five, we have an application for a new common victualler license for, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name, Vout Som DBA Soup Noodle Bowl. And this is going um, to be at 150 King Street in Northampton. 
And do we have somebody here from the restaurant? Yes. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm I'm glad. Well, thank you for asking. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Could you just tell me how to pronounce your name correctly? Yes, foot. Rhyme with foot. Wonderful. Yes. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. And um, so you're opening a new restaurant in Northampton. Yes. That's fantastic. Do you want to let us know a little bit about what you'll be doing? Yeah, um, this is going to be served um, like uh, Cambodian American food. Um, uh, the highlight would be the um, noodle soup, like similar to for like the Vietnamese style uh, for and that, and also um, uh, other appetizer like the egg rolls uh, was popular and. Uh, smoothie um bubble tea yeah um well getting back to um the uh the soup um they're going to be uh, either two or three uh different type so, uh, one of them is going to be like a chicken but like a whole chicken um uh, broth mm -hmm. and the uh, other one is um beef bone broth and the third one is uh what we call Phnom Penh is uh, we use, uh, we mix it with the um, pork bone. Um, and that's just also with the flavor of the onions, um, uh, gray onions, when you put it in the soup, make, bring a more aroma f flavor of the onions. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, opening this restaurant soon. I'm aiming to open and uh, with plan to um, by the end of September or October. Uh, but right now it's a uh, uh, little behind. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and I uh, can't wait to serve the community of uh, Northampton. And because I don't see any uh, American restaurant in Northampton, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I just it's going to be new to uh, uh, everyone, and I hope they um, that they will enjoy it and come and give it a try when we open. And also, um, the location is nice. What I see is also like a, a pathway for people, travelers, um, going to. Um, to East Hampton and coming from Amherst. And so pretty much you know, the traffic um, pathway is very um, diverse and very um, a good location and looking to uh, meet all different type of uh, uh, walk of life for people um, nationality and yeah. It sounds great. And I can't wait for you to open. Thank you. Um, do Helen and Jennifer, what questions or comments do you have? I don't have any questions. I look forward to having a Cambodian American restaurant in town. I think that's very exciting. It is. Also not unusual to be behind schedule when you're opening a restaurant. That is far <laughs> the course. So, so welcome. Thank you. And is this location, the number 150 on King, is this the old China Walk Express? Yes, yes, it okay. is. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's a great spot. You'll have lots of exposure there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And parking. That's great. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing about your plans. Um, my pleasure. And I think we're ready for a motion then for this license. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new common victual license for about some DBA soup noodle bowl at 150 King Street in Northampton. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you for coming. Good You're luck. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Wishes. Okay. Item number six, we have an application for short-term liquor license for the Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park at 300 North Main Street on Sunday, October 6th from 12 to 7. This is at the Sanctuary at Willow Lake, and the event is playing for the Pines Musical Fundraiser and a wine and malt license is sought. Hello. Hi there. 
How are you? Good. My name's Mark, by the way. I noticed my profile name is cut off there. <laughs> you're, you're no longer a mystery. Right. What's your last name, Mark? Penny, P-E-N-N-E-Y. Great. great. Great to meet you. Yeah, you too. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about this event? Yeah, so this is the second uh, time we've done this. Uh, last year was the first, so hopefully it'll be an annual event. So it's a fundraiser for the Pine Cedar Preservation Fund. So we have, it should be a fun day with uh, live music at three venues in the park at the Pines, which we already have our our uh, annual liquor license. And then here at the sanctuary and also in the train parking lot, which I haven't seen the agenda. I don't know if that's the next item on there, but it's the same event. And so the sanctuary was a beautiful location for music last year, and it was just missing having having a a, a bar so people could you know have it have some local craft beer and wine while they were watching the music there. Um, so the plan was to set up a small beer and wine bar at the uh, right on the dock on the lake, sort of facing there, and the area is fairly self-contained. It's <clears throat> bordered on. Uh, no, about half of it by the lake, and then we have the the bands will be playing under the sanctuary sort of a frame building there. Um, and the plan was to just uh, put up signage that we have plenty of no alcohol beyond this point on the on the two sides. Great, sounds yeah. like you'll have it set up mm -hmm. really well. I hope you have good weather that day. Yes, it was last year. It was like yeah, eating sunny, so that's that's <laughs> always the key. Um, Helen and Jennifer, any questions or comments for this request? No questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Then we're ready for a, or Helen, you're all set. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I know you've done successful, successful events in the past. So yeah, no questions. All right. Then we're ready for a motion for the sanctuary application. Uh, I will make a motion to approve the application for a short term liquor license um, for Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park as detailed in item six on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, then we have an application for a short term liquor license for the Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street. Same day, October 6, 12 to 7, location in the train parking lot. And again, this is for playing for Pines Musical Fundraiser, just a different spot, wine and malt license. Hello. Yeah, exactly the same, different spot. And we like the idea of the train lot because it, again, it's, no, we hate, if we don't have to put up the snow fencing and the huge in the ball field, it's, you know, yep. it doesn't look good and it's a lot of work. So we love the train lot, the corner. As soon as you enter uh, the train lot, if you've ever been there, it's got hedgerow on three sides. So natural barricade. And then um, we will have some food vendors and maybe some other vendors uh, at that event. So those will all get sort of uh, mapped out where it is open. So it'll kind of create more barricades. And if there is a, a an entry point for people to come and go, we'll just have signage up for no alcohol beyond this point. And, uh, okay. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Helen and Jennifer, anything? Not for me. Yeah, I wanted to make sure, Mark, that a sign is going up, but I think you just mentioned that you will. It have is. Yeah, we have plenty of signs. Yeah. Sign yep. Perfect. Yep. That was mm -hmm. my other question. Great. All right. Then we're ready for that motion. You want to take it, Jennifer? I know I'm hogging sure. all the motions. Yep. No worries. <laughs> I put forward a motion to approve item number seven on the agenda the application for a short term liquor license for the Frank Newhall Book Memorial Park event on Sunday, October 6th at the train parking lot. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. All right. We have one more for Mark, and it's item mm -hmm. eight, application for short-term liquor license, Frank Newhall at Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street, October 26th from 12 to 9 p.m. in the train parking lot, and this is for the fall festival at the Haunted Train. Yeah, so this is also year two. We're doing lots of new stuff here at the park. So uh, we did this event last year, the last Saturday of of Haunted Train. Um, it was a great turnout, but we and we had a live band and food trucks and uh, partnered with Parks and Rec Department to have a, a kid family zone. We did do that in the ball field and with all the fencing. So, but again, we're going to switch gears and do it just like 
the plane for the pines in the train lot, same yeah. setup, hedgerow as a barrier and food trucks and craft vendors to to kind of make it so it's just a one narrow entry point in and out that'll have signage. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, questions or comments from commissioners? No questions. No, thank you. Helen, are you all set? Yeah, I'm all set. All right, then we're ready for the last motion. Want to take it, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. you, oh, I got it. Um, I will make a motion to approve the application for a short short term liquor license for Frank Newhall Lick Memorial Park as detailed in item eight on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all so much. Take care. Me too. All right, moving on to item number nine, we have a public hearing on an application for a new annual wine and malt restaurant license for Labonte and Banas LLC DBA Toasted at 111 Pleasant Street. The proposed manager is Brad Labonte Banas, and I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Oh, oh. sorry, uh, I don't see the applicant. Oh, okay. Um, unless they're under a different name. Um, but I don't see him. Okay. Um, then let's move to the next. And if he joins us, we'll scoot him in. All right. So moving on then to item 10, we have an application for a new automatic amusement device license at Mochina LLC, DBA Mochina, 96 Main Street. And this is for one prize craze claw machine. And now we're ready for the person here from Mochinat. Hi. Yeah, I apologize about that before. A little unsure. That's okay. There's no need um, to apologize. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, my name is Lucy Opry. I'm the sales and service manager for Lucky Duck Vending. Um, I know Mochinat has had a lot of play on our first machine we've installed, and it seems like their customers love it. Um, so we're just hoping for an, another license for the second machine. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems to be have become a popular item and we haven't had any complaints about it. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't have any questions. No, no questions. All right, then we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new automatic amusement device license for MochiNut as detailed in item 10 on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And, all right. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure thing. All right. Um, I think Brad is here. Oh, is Brad here? I see a hand. Oh, yep. There he is. Okay. Okay, great. So we're going to go back to number nine. We have a public hearing on an application for a new annual wine and malt restaurant license. Labonte and Banas, LLC, DBA Toasted, 111 Pleasant Street. Proposed manager is Brad Labonte Banas. Hi, everybody. I'm, I've been, I'm sorry. It's okay. No uh, worries. So now we have to open the public hearing. Okay, so I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment on this item? Seeing nobody. Brad, why don't you let us know what your plans are? Um, <clears throat> beer and wine. We're hoping to offer sangria. Uh, boost sales, hopefully. I noticed that there was a full liquor license here before, and in the future, I'm going to pursue that. But as of right now, we're going to be happy with the beer and wine. I'm also looking to do catered events at night when we close, and mm -hmm. beer and wine dinners would be a huge aspect of what I'm trying to do. Um, sell tickets, have a set number of people, and then plate really fine, high-end food if possible. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I, I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, questions? or comments from Helen and Jennifer? 
Uh, I guess I just actually have a question for Annie, just because you mentioned, Brad, about um, doing beer and wine dinners after you close. I don't know if the license needs to read. Is it just sort of a blanket license or does it does it read according to the hours of operation? Just because I would want it to be flexible so Brad can use it when he needs it. So, I mean, in general, the hours are 8 a.m. to 1 a.m., for week weekdays, which includes Saturday, and then Sunday is I think 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Okay, so it's just a, it covers. Okay, so it's not according specifically to hours of operation for a venue. It's just a perfect. Okay, sounds like okay, good. Jennifer, do you have any questions for Brad? No, no, documents were complete. Thank you. Okay, then I will make a motion to close the public hearing for discussion. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, yeah, I have no issues with moving forward with issuing this license. I think it's a great opportunity to enhance the offerings and attract more people and especially bring some life in for nighttime events. Great, I don't have any issues with it either. Okay. I agree with you, Natasha, thank you. Then a motion. There we go, I will make a motion to approve the application for a new annual wine and malt restaurant license for Levante and Vanus. If I said that right, LLC DBA toasted as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen. Yeah. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you, Brad. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time. Yes. Thank see you. ya. Item 11, we have an application for a short-term liquor license for Click Workspace Incorporated, nine and a half Market Street. The event is the 2024 Hampshire County Real Estate Forum, Better Closings, Thursday, October 17th from 5.30 to 7.30. And this is a wine and malt license. And do we have click here? Don't see Mary, unless again, she's under a different name. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing her. All right, we will put that on hold if she arrives. Item 12, we have a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of common victualler and entertainment licenses. The transferer is Gombo Oyster Bar LLC, transfer E, Let Me Be Lucy LLC, DBA Gombo Oyster Bar at 159 Main Street. The proposed manager is Cassidy Bowman. There is a proposed entertainment for amplified live acoustic music, jazz, and blues within normal operating hours a few times a month, Sundays, 1 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. and Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. Um, do we have everybody here for this one? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. Great, so I am going to make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Is there anybody here for public comment on this hearing? Seeing nobody, we can jump right in. Hello. Hello, my name is Cassidy Bowman. This is my wife, Tamara Bowman. This is the manager of Gombo, Naya Ford. Yes. And this is the current owner of Gombo, John Piscor. Yeah, know me. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see you all. Good to so see you. there is a sale happening, I understand. Excellent. Do you want to let us know what your plans are for the business or any changes you might be making? So really the... They're, the biggest thing is that Gombo is staying Gombo. Uh, Tamara and I fell in love with the place pretty much the week that it opened. And uh, we've been going there for over a year and became very close with the, the manager and the owner and the staff there. And uh, when it came time for John to move on to the next chapter of his life, he approached us and uh, we talked about it and uh, we thought we were the best uh, people to shepherd Gombo to the next uh, phase of its life. 
and uh, extremely happy that Naya is staying there as the manager and the staff is really, we actually told the staff on Sunday uh, about the change and everybody's really happy. Um, so we want, uh, we want Gombo to stay Gombo and we believe it, it's going to be a pillar of Northampton. And we That's love great. Northampton. We great. have four kids, uh, we have four kids, a bunch of them in school here. So we see this as a, a really long-term thing. Have you had a restaurant before? So I started my career uh, managing a couple cafes in downtown San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've done that and transitioned more to like operations management uh, and um, so and, and purchasing. So I've got a lot of um, management and, and sort of operations experience. Okay. Uh, Jennifer and Helen. Questions, comments? I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay. I do want to mention in regards to the entertainment license, the building commissioner has weighed in. And um, as long as you leave all of the tables and chairs in place during your music, then it's fine. If you are moving tables and chairs, then you will have to have a, what's called an entertainment response from your fire alarm system, which is kind of a different animal. And the building commissioner would be able to guide you through that process. Good so, to know. Thank you. Yeah. So for the time being, if we if we discuss and approve the entertainment license, then it would be based on not moving any furniture to create a different space for live music. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Then if there's nothing else from anybody, I'll make them every every all set to move on to discussion. Yeah, sure. I was just gonna make a comment that I oh, uh, please. I, think I think it's great that um with this transition that a lot of the staff and the manager are staying. Yeah. Here very helpful for the transition of any restaurant so that's absolutely that's good it helps us as well with with understanding what your your efforts are because you're working with an existing team so that's helpful it's familiar to us already position has been great and yeah. uh, it's been a win-win for everybody so we're really excited right. we are I'm here to help uh you know guide for an indefinite period as far as the culinary side goes and and just consulting for cassidy and naya and wherever anyone needs some yep Okay, that's great to know. Thank you. All right, then I will make a motion to close the public hearing for discussion. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Well, I think this is great and exciting opportunity for these folks to take over and Keep a restaurant open, of course. Yes, certainly. Yeah. It's going to stay the same, and I think that it's going to get better too. So, yeah, good. Um, and it is reassuring to me that they are that you do have the same management staff, so they're 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 known to us. They know us. It's it it will add a level they of know the regulations. Yes. Yeah. That was the uh, one of the big reasons why this could all be possible. Yeah. Totally. Um, Helen and Jennifer, did you want to add anything else before we move on to a vote? No, I know I'm ready to make the motion. Okay. I have nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Then we are ready for the motion. Okay. I'll make a motion. Uh, Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh. Go forward. Sorry. Um, oh, oh. so you're also, I don't know, are you going to do oh. the entertainment and the common Vic in this mo motion? Yes. That, that's okay. what was my anticipation. So. Okay. Sorry, yes, no, it's great. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah since it was all rolled into that item, I thought. Yeah. So. Okay, um, make a motion, motion to approve the application for a transfer of license on an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of common victualler, victualler and entertainment licenses um, from Gombo Oyster Bar LLC to Let Me Be Lucy LLC DBA Gombo Oyster Bar as detailed in item 12 of the agenda. Second. And Jennifer, or yeah, Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> Helen. Yeah. And Natasha. Yes. All right, congratulations. Wow. You, you own a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So has has anybody from Click stepped I, in? No, I don't see that. I don't see Mary. All right. 
Then we are going to move on to items 13 and 14, and they're listed separately on the agenda, but because it's for the same location, we're going to combine them. Um, and Annie, just administratively, I just want to note, do you want public comment after we've heard from licensee applicant or first? Um, I think you should hear from the applicant first. Okay. Okay, very good. Then uh, moving to items 13 and 14, we are going to have a hearing relative to um, the entertainment license held by 99 Main Street, LLC, DBA, Ms. Florence Diner, located at 99 Main Street, Florence, Mass., including clarification of the day or days entertainment is allowed under the current entertainment license, as well as um, here, the new entertainment license application for 99 Main, LLC, DBA, Ms. Florence Diner, located at 99 Main Street, Florence. So i make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Okay. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Uh, Annie, I am abstaining from a vote here because I have a conflict, so I don't know if I vote for a public hearing or not. Um, yes, I guess that should have happened before the motion. So okay. you, I motion. so I guess it'll be you're abstaining. I am abstaining. Okay. All right, then. Um, before we jump into this, I just want to say entertainment, outdoor entertainment lessons, licenses have been the most difficult thing that we've had to deal with. And I, I place them as more difficult than dealing with the Eric Schuer licenses. And part of that is because our conversations get really contentious. And I wanna take a cue from the public comment that we had at the very start of this meeting and hearing from musicians and business owners and stakeholders and residents and everybody and see how uh, respectfully they spoke to each other or not to each other, but how they spoke to the issue and the desire to collaborate to come to solutions. And I'm a firm believer that if something is contentious, we're not gonna have the best outcome at the end. So if we can get through this hearing in a different way from three years ago when we were here for the same location, then that would be fantastic. So that being said, I would like to open it up to Attorney Lane and Georgiana to share with us um, their thoughts. I know the first thing, the hearing that we had originally scheduled was to discuss how the license was interpreted, essentially, the license that is held. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And um, then, of course, share with us what your hopes are for the new application. Thanks so much. Uh, this is Attorney Peter Lane, Fierce Bloomberg Ohm uh, for uh, 99 Main Street LLC, doing business as Miss Florence Diner. Um, uh, and I appreciated uh, what you had just said, uh, Commissioner Yakovlev, um, uh, particularly having uh, sat here through the um, public comments on Strong Avenue. I mean, it's so clear that um, outdoor entertainment has become so important for so many restaurants in the Valley. Um, and um, it can drive the economy, it drives business for the restaurants. Um, Ms. Florence Diner is no different. Um, the outdoor entertainment has been a real boon. Um, it brings customers. Um, I think it's important to also begin with a really sharp distinction between what's happening at Miss Florence Diner and what's going on on Strong Avenue and Brewster. Uh, uh, as applied for, um, Miss Florence Diner has consistently had quiet acoustic music uh, or uh, jazz duos, singer songwriters. Um, uh, Miss Florence Diner uses the um, uh same small pavilion in the back uh that um JJ's tavern uh uses as well they share that uh, but that's the but that's the only connection between the two is that they're just using the same outdoor space um it seems to me that um certainly since June of 2022 when JJ's had applied um, for or got final approval for its license, um, and we conducted a sound study, I was representing JJ's at that time as well. Uh, we conducted a sound study um, 
to show how how completely easy it is to have um, audible ambient music for diners um, that stays well within the um, city ordinance on decibel levels um, for uh, sound in residential neighborhood. Um, uh, we're not aware of any complaints since then. Uh, I don't know if the commission has received any, but uh, we certainly have not been aware of any. Um, and so uh, with all that, um, Ms. Florence Diner is at this point uh, applying for uh, adding days where it can have that same soft ambient music uh, outside for diners um, uh, weekday evenings, uh, Monday through Wednesday, 4 to 7 p.m. at the height of rush hour on Route 9. Um, and um, I think also, too, uh, as you indicated, I guess when we have these as separate points here, um, we just needed to get clear on the interpretation of the license already issued, uh, which indicates that um, there can be live outdoor music Saturday or Sunday um, from 11. So sorry, I should put this document up in front of me. Uh, from 11 to 2 p.m. Um, we've, we've interpreted that, and Ms. Lawrence Steiner, frankly, on my advice, interpreted that um, as an either as a uh, as an either or, but not exclusive of each other. Um, and I think that is the fair read of of the grammar there uh, to be conducted on Saturday or Sunday between the hours of 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. The application in 2021 was for one or two days a week. Um, and I don't, I don't recall any discussion of making it exclusive either. It had to be only one day a week. Um, and so, um, that, uh, you know, based on that, Ms. Florence Steiner, uh, was hoping to book for both Saturday and Sunday. Since then, of course, we've had discussions with the city through, um, attorney Seawald, uh, that there could be state statute that actually prevents the city from issuing entertainment licenses uh, for um, uh, Sundays before 1 p.m. Um, it appears at the moment there are at least one other license out there, I think for Brewster, um, um, that uh, allows music starting at noon on Sundays. Um, so I, I don't know if the city has come to any conclusion on that, um, but as long as the city is issuing licenses on Sunday, I don't see why um, Sunday or before 1 p.m., I don't see why Ms. Florence Steiner should be treated any differently in that regard. So in terms of interpreting the license, con the current license, um, I, I would say that it allows the flexibility of having music on a Saturday or a Sunday without those days being exclusive of each other. Um, for the new application, um, as I before, said- Just one quick question before I move on to the new application. So there was the issue, the difference of interpretation of the word or, but then the timing on the license. So the license was written 11 to two, but music had been consistently right. and, at 10 a.m. So I, I'm, I'm, if there's, if you could just speak to that a little bit, how? Sure, and, and um, I, I had um, I had submitted a letter to the licensing commission um, I, back at the start of the summer, uh, yeah. acknowledging that that was an error, and that going forward, um, all music would be uh, scheduled for no earlier than eleven a.m. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that. no, no, it's fine. Um, so uh, I guess then just moving on to the next point for the new application. Um, again, uh, it drives the, the, the live music is appreciated by diners. Uh, it drives customers, it drives business. Miss Florence Diner is a historic landmark. It's on the National Registry of Historic Places. Um, I believe it's a little more than 80 years old at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to, to keep it moving and to make this affordable for any restaurateur, um, live music has become crucial. Um, 
it uh, guarantees a certain number of diners. Uh, and um, to that end, Miss Florence Diner would like to add uh, Monday through Wednesday night, it serves, it serves dinner on those evenings until 7 p.m. And uh, it's looking to just have live music in the pavilion and the warmer weather um, consistent with the current license uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, and then in the cooler weather to allow uh, that music inside. Um, the, uh, I mentioned the sound study that actually JJ's had, um, uh, JJ's Tavern had conducted with um, CSA Acoustics. Um, they right. are uh, um, cross-spectrum acoustics our uh, sound experts uh, who were hired to conduct a study in June 2022, as we had discussed at a hearing for JJ's Tavern. But again, I, I'm bringing it up because it's it's this is the same exact pavilion yep. um, with the same kind of music being proposed. Um, and we had conducted a study. Um, notice was given to residents. Um, people were... Uh, uh, at least uh, one or two of the residents nearby were present. Um, I think the study was um, important because what it showed was that, you know, the ambient sound of the neighborhood uh, uh, on a on an af weekday afternoon around five o'clock uh, is at about 55 decibels. Um, of course, the city ordinance calls for a limit at 60 decibels in a residential neighborhood. Um, the uh, live music, which had, for that study was a single singer songwriter uh, on an acoustic guitar and vocals. Um, and uh, the recordings of her live music at two points, one was 128 High Street, uh, the other was 17 North Maple. Um, and what that found was um, decibel readings of about uh, 55 to 57 decibels, um, which is only adding, um, well, it's adding zero to two decibels above uh, just the sound of traffic on Route 9 um, at 5 p.m. Um, the uh, the, the uh, engineers, played a bit with sound. Uh, first, they did pre-recorded music, which of course they had the ability to crank a little bit louder. Um, but the goal was to kind of have music playing at a level that you would expect if people were sitting nearby dining. Um, and so in all instances, the decibel levels were um, below 60 decibels. Um, I have the report. I don't recall if JJ's provided that report to um, the licensing commission. Um, I, I have it here. We have JJ's permission to use it for for uh, for Miss Florence Diner's purposes as well on this application. Um, I can be sure to email it to Miss Lesko. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be helpful just to have on yeah. record. Sure. Um, but you know, listen, this would just this would be the goal. No, no, no different. And you know, I, again, I'm 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 um, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to 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 watch the and listen to the public discussion on Strong Avenue just now. Um, there's never there's you know th there's nothing like the rock bands that people are concerned with downtown. Um, uh, Ms. Broughton has made clear in her applications that this is always going to be limited to soft acoustic music, uh, single singer songwriters, acoustic guitars, um, jazz duos at the most. Um, we're not talking about rock bands. We're not talking about full drum kits. Um, and if there's amplification, we've already conducted the study. We already know how to control this sound and keep it low. And again, I've not heard of a single complaint since this sound study was conducted in June, 2022. Um, to that end, I was just speaking with John Newman, the owner of JJ's Tavern this afternoon. Um, and he did remind me that since the sound study, the pavilion has also been further insulated with um, a stockade fence, um, which I, I'm assuming has just only helped. I don't, you know, I don't have expert testimony on that, but um, 
again, I just anecdotally, I, I'm not aware of a single complaint. If the commission has any, I'd love to hear about it. I know there's at least one member of the public, maybe some others who, who are gonna chime in um, after this. Can, um, I'm sorry, I just need to interrupt for one second. Annie, can you mute me? I need to go into my kitchen. It's just gonna be really loud. I can still hear you. Okay. Case in point, <laughs> owner is here for the hearing, but also trying to run a business at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, That's the beauty of being able to do these meetings via Zoom. <laughs> it's really appreciated I, I, by our restaurant owners. And um, appreciated by me as well. So thank you. Um, I don't, um, uh, I'd be curious to hear what anyone who's here from the from the neighborhood has to say. Um, I'd, I'd like to perhaps reserve the ability to um, uh to be heard again afterwards. I'm not sure if that's procedurally allowed, but. Um, uh, I mean, I think it would be fair. And the the reason that would be important to me for to have this opportunity is because, you know, you've talked about the outdoor music being a driver of business and economy, but we're also talking about um, things that are driving community. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, we, we're dealing with neighbors, residential neighbors, business neighbors, and having an infusion of some sense of community together, I think would be a helpful piece of this conversation. Uh, absolutely. Um, so again, um, I, I think I'm happy to just sit back for a second and hear what uh, folks in the neighborhood do have to say. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer, did you have any questions and comments for Peter before we open up public comment? Uh, I think I'd love to hear the public open up public comment and then I'm taking it in and then, then okay. respond later. Okay, so we will hear from the public and then we will give Peter another opportunity to speak um, before we have our discussion. So who do we have here for public comment this afternoon? Okay, and I hope, all right. And Annie will unmute you. And if you could just let us know who your what your names are. Sure. My name is Elisa Foreman. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Yes. So my husband Ron and I live at 33 Kai Street in Florence. We're about a block from this Flo's Diner. Um, so I wanted to thank the commission for yet again um, having a hearing in regards to this. And thank you, Attorney Lane, for your comments. So a couple of things I think are important to point out. Um, one being sort of the somewhat unusual acoustics of our neighborhood. There have been a number of times where I've walked past Miss Flo's diner while music is playing. And I will say it really has not seemed excessively loud. However, at my house, which is about an hour, uh, about a block away, it is just as loud. So, um, you know, I think the acoustics of the neighborhood need to be taken into account. You know, my husband and I live in Florence because we want to live near a vibrant, walkable village. We want to support small businesses. We want to support live music. You know, one of my concerns about this is that both in terms of the volume of the music and the hours at which it's been played, it has excessively, consistently been excessive. Um, I emailed um, Ms. Brunton last year about this and no change was made. My husband and I have each called the restaurant this year asking for the volume to be lowered. We've been told that that's not possible. I did write a letter to the commission earlier this year expressing my concerns as well. So I just, um, to your point, Attorney Lane, I just want to let you know that there really have been concerns here. So one of the other issues that I know we had discussed in terms of this, um, when we were talking about JJ's, um, has been the difference between acoustic and unamplified. So it's really not the style of the music as much as the volume. So I would like to point out that I think every acoustic musician has had a microphone and an amplifier and speakers. Um, so, and it's the volume has been to the point where it is certainly far louder than the traffic we hear from Main Street. It's loud enough that even in our house with the window shut, we can still hear it. And, you know, disruptive enough that, um, you know, we really, don't want to be out in the yard sort of listening to it. Um, so, you know, my concern is we already have JJ's on Friday evening. I mean, I think to have perhaps Saturday mornings would be reasonable, but, you know, please consider um, 
to like needs this to is a residential neighborhood yeah. and to include uh, now go into the work week to come home to that as, as not even be able to enjoy our weekends and now try to add in a few extra days that's that's ridiculous for us it just doesn't make it worth to, to live here anymore and the study i also like to uh, say that they all knew that there was going to be a study so they brought in a single guitar player very quiet and monitored but it was all set up it's never like that. It, we did notice that time that it was quieter, but that's the rare time. We have to call often that please turn it down and we get the, we have a license, we can do this. And it's just, you know, like I said, during the summer, which was very humid with our air conditioners on, we're inside and we can still hear the music. It's, it's, it's too loud and to uh, add in more days, weekdays, in the neighborhood, this this you can't compare this to downtown Northampton. This is apples and oranges. The, the Strong Avenue isn't the backyard of Florence, where all the houses are there and it's open. It's not it's, it's not walled in with uh, brick buildings. It's it's a different situation. So I don't think that's a, a fair comparison um, to have all those. And then you know, granted, it's 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 probably is good for them to have the little extra business they may get, but it's, it's terrifying for us to be here. Just terrifying. And we do call and complain often, but to no avail. Okay, thank you. Um, I know uh, Fabio spoke earlier. Is he still here? Is there somebody else who wants to speak? I think that's who AB is. Okay. Yes, I'm using a different account uh, for Zoom. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Can you hear me? We, oh, we can hear you, yes. Uh, my name is Fabio Delorto. I'm also a neighbor. I live like directly behind uh, Miss Florence, my backyard. I can see Miss Florence. And um, yeah, like we have a discussion three years ago and we expressed like I was a problem. It started very tumultuous, like season disease letter, like a licenses file. Like I really believe that we should have like a more community uh, oriented approach. Like, however, I never, I never felt community back towards me. I felt that I was completely unheard. Uh, I it's extremely disruptive to me, my growing family, my neighbor. Like right now, this summer, like every single weekend, every single weekend day, like for hours on end, like I have to shut down my windows. And it's not this summer. It's spring, summer, and fall. Like it's there are actually no end dates in the license. And even the license they're requesting right now, it's cooler months versus summer months, which is, uh, I'm actually like a little bit scared of not having like anything more precise because uh, yes, there have been like multiple situations in which license has been abused, starting with having the first concert without a license and then continuing going on, like repeatedly, continuously being outside of the allocated uh, time frame, having in uh, separate occasions, uh, one at least was a weeknight and the other one I think it was yeah they both were weeknights like actual uh concerts at night with full band for Miss Florence one selling tickets uh like uh, I can tell you one of the names Miss Flo turned 80 uh September some December 26 2021 uh under the pavilion tickets available thirty dollars with like Jamie Livesey and the Junk Show, Cash Bar by JJ Tavern. So there is actually interaction between Miss Flo and JJ beside having the, um, besides sharing a place. And yes, at times is really loud. Uh, I have to basically like close down my windows like during like the best time of the day for most of the time. I can still hear it. I can 
definitely hear it from my toddler's room, like through the skylights when they're closed with a pull down uh, blind. Um, yes, I was present at the acoustic, uh, uh, at the acoustic test that was held like under an empty pavilion with one person on a rainy day. I was there with my umbrella. Rain dampens the sound, like, and it was, you know, definitely quieter than not all, but most events held uh, there. I'm a little bit, I had a similar experience uh, making complaints to the license, uh, to the authorities, and just being said, like, they can do it. I emailed the license commission once, like, through any, once I say, when I specifically ask, like, what's their license? Can they do, like, evening shows? And it was probably like, no, they cannot. And I made a suggestion to take that into account. Oh, I think we've lost you. When the license gets renewed, I like, oh, like eventually. But yeah, I, I don't have a reason to trust Miss Flo in following the rules that are already here. And I don't, don't know why I should trust them for the future in a wildly, wildly expand uh, situation. We're talking about like, five shows a week, six is we include the other licensee at the same location, which is the other licensee gonna ask for five shows as well? I don't know. And this is in my backyard, quite literally. And yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I would like to be able to have like a play date like for my toddler with his friends, like in my backyard without having to explain like the lyrics of Mick Jackson. Like, uh, from Johnny Cash, which I heard like way too many times this summer. It's, it is a nuisance. At least it is a nuisance for me. It is a nuisance for my family. It is a nuisance for at least some of my neighbors who are here complaining. And we did complain and everything came to deaf ears. And we discovered like Miss Flo did not contact us telling us like we're thinking about expanding this license. There is no neighborly Never really anything in uh, in regards to this uh, to this license. Like in this sense, uh, because I'm not sure that I cannot trust like audio. Like the audio is surely more than 50 dB, and there is no comparison between the background noise before the music starts and after the music starts. Like I know it. It's Sunday morning. I'm like at home with the windows open. Like even with the windows closed, I can hear it from my bedroom, which faces. Uh, uh, faces Miss Flo. My personal ask for the commission is because of that, because it's hard like to have something that's like almost qualitatively like uh, to be defined what is too loud, is too noise, like to keep one day a week for outdoor entertainment for Miss Flo. They can do indoor entertainment like other licensees at the place do, like they're specifically asking to do and keep one day a week so we can actually plan our lives around that. We are doing this uh, uh, sacrifice, uh, working around uh, the necessity of, uh, uh, of the business. And yes, when like this whole thing started, you know, I've been living here for almost a decade and there was a parking lot and then it's been transformed uh, into an outdoor dining area and then into a music venue. And when we, the neighbors, complain about the fact we're scared of it, it's going to become like a permanent, constant, and pervasive outdoor music venue, we were told, no, it's not going to happen. And now we had like at least two. I always like understood that the license for Miss Flo was only one day, exclusive or not inclusive or. I'm Italian. In Italian, we actually have a different word or for exclusive or that would have saved the problem. Uh, and, uh, and now they're basically asking me like to have like a, a concert going on in my backyard. Like I can like now, like there are like a bunch of leaves, but I can see from the window next to me, uh, the diner six times a week, five from Miss Florence uh, and once from JJ's, assuming JJ's does not, uh, ask more. I don't think it's reasonable for the people living here. And again, the license, the entertainment for Miss Flo started without a license. The entertainment for JJ started without a license in 2020. 
then they constantly miss flow, constantly like push license. They have to say that JJ Slick has been like pretty good in following their license and they had no complaints. Miss Flo did not follow their license, like try like, to push over in time, in days, and now try to legalize like this uh, expansion. It's, it's an extreme nuisance for me, an extreme nuisance for my family, is detrimental to my quality of life. Uh, it is uh, just simply not comparable, the background noise, at least from my house. And, uh, and yeah, it's just like, I bought this house thinking I'm going to live here forever. I don't feel too much like that anymore. Again, one day a week, even if I don't like it, I go out. Friday night, I go out. Saturday morning or Sunday morning, I go out. I urge the commission to keep one day a week, specify which day of the week unambiguously. It is Saturday, 10 to 11 to 1. Great. Be precise and have an enforcement mechanism for violations because there has been like constant pervasive violations and there was nobody that would address them. Not Miss Flo, not the town. So that's uh, that's pretty, pretty much it. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for running this. Thank you for having an open uh, an open forum uh, to discuss this. And uh, thank you for the commission work. I know that you volunteer your time and this is stressful. I get it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the foremans would like to be recognized one more time. I will allow that. Oh, hold on, we can't hear you. So I've asked uh, Attorney Lane to unmute. Yeah, yeah, you're asking me to unmute, but I believe the foremans are being recognized. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, that's okay. <laughs> I missed that part. Um, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to add, we're, we're, we're begging you not to allow that Monday through Wednesday. We're, 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 we're literally begging you, please. It's just too much. She does not abide to the rules. I have to admit, JJ has done an outstanding job listening to the public and, and adhering to the rules. But uh, Miss Flows constantly has two or three, four people on stage amplified. And it's, it's, it's enough on the weekends, but to bring in the weekdays, please. I'd also like to um, echo Fabio's comments that it'd be really helpful to have one specific day on the weekend. And given the uncertainty as to whether or not Sunday is legal, um, it would make sense to make it on Saturday, but it would be very helpful to plan around that. I mean, certainly in the spirit of compromise, we really want to try to meet Ms. Flo's halfway here. But one other thing I would like to add, if the um, commission could please let us know, um, you know, if the regulations or the license isn't followed, what sort of recourse do we have? That would be really helpful. And thank you again for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, uh, Attorney Lane. Did I mute him again? Yep. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so I, I was not involved in this um, before July 2021. Um, I understand things might have been contentious at that time. Um, I remember the hearing in July 2021 um, for Ms. Flows. And, and, and I, I think actually, before I even go further, I just want to make sure, I, I, I don't feel like there's like, total respect to the neighbors and the fact that something can be below 60 decibels but still be audible at certain places in the neighborhood. Like I, I, I understand how that can work. Um, at the same time, I, I just wanna be clear that there's this distinction between Ms. Flo's, who is the current applicant and JJ's Tavern. Um, I, I, Ms. Flo's refutes any allegation that there has 
been large bands of four or five people um, and that um, uh, my client has indicated to me is that they have never had more than two people. Um, they've also indicated to me that they've, if they've received a call, they then attempt to manually reduce the sound. Um, so I understand that there's two folks from the neighborhood here. Um, and I understand they've expressed their feelings and their experiences. Um, but um, I just, it, the, the past discussions were about, you know, allowing, allowing music um, that helps the businesses um, but that also respects the community. Um, and I feel like uh, those compromises were on making sure that it remained acoustic, um, single or two performers, um, and that uh, in all instances, um, sound levels are respected. Um, and it, to me, it seems like that is what has been going on. Um, Ms. Flows remains open to responding to her neighbors um, if people call and have concerns, um, they'll they'll do their best to reduce sound. Um, so um, uh, the other thing I just wanted to stress is that at this point, uh, the music's over for the season. Um, uh, outside music's over for the season. So um, through the spring um, on the new application, Ms. Lowe's would just be looking for a uh, license for the inside music. Um, I think also I just want to stress uh, this is a residential and a commercial district. It's the, it's the intersection of Route 9. Uh, it's an intersection surrounded by businesses, uh, surrounded by businesses, surrounded by... Um, uh, group homes um, surrounded by the public library. Um, the city allows uh, a concert series, I believe, every Thursday night throughout the summer. Um, I don't, I'm not aware that it has any of the similar limitations on it that um, Ms. Flo's Diner has on its entertainment in terms of um, numbers, size of bands. Um, so, I, I feel like there's got to be a way for this to to move forward that allows Ms. Florence Diner to expand the number of days a week that it has this live music because it is such a business generator. Um, but of course, we can see that it must be done in a way that 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 respects the quality of life of the people who live in the neighborhood. Um, thankfully, Northampton has a zoning ordinance on sound. Um, the the level is 60 decibels. Um, I think if there's ever, and people have been asking about enforcement, I mean, I would just venture to say that if there's if there's ever a concern, uh, I know that Ms. Flows would be open to uh, having someone from the city come to measure sound and to make any adjustments necessary um, that would allow them to continue with the music, but to reduce sound um, to a place where it's audible to the diners, but not a nuisance to those in the neighborhood. Um, uh, so I think for now, that's uh, that's what we have to offer. So I have a couple of follow-up questions for you. Um, both of the applications, her original application states acoustic music and the new application states acoustic music. So that would mean no electric amplification, including amps. Is that occurring or are you, are you uh, saying no. that there are no amplifiers on the pavilion? No, I, I, um, there, there may very well be amplifiers depending upon what the instruments are. And I remember this discussion from July of 2021. Um, it's it's pretty impossible to do this without some kind of amplification. Um, so, no, and I, I remember the discussion as well. And and at the time, Commissioner Campidelli, his position was that it, music can be turned down. Mm -hmm. So we're hearing it's not being turned down 
and you're saying should be open to doing that for people, but that also doesn't seem to be what's been experienced. But what Miss no, what uh, Miss Florence Diner has represented to me that they've received a complaint in the last twelve months, and they tried to turn it down. Okay. So um, I understand. I understand what the foremans are saying, but that's not consistent with what I'm hearing from my client. Yeah, there's definitely two narratives of what's occurring. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to tell us some specific months that she's seeking for the outdoor piece? Because that is not included on the application and in our discussion mm -hmm. about this application, I wanna be very clear on dates. Sure. Months that she is seeking to do this. Yeah, and I'd actually ask if, if Georgie, if you're available right now, um, could she be unmuted, Ms. Lesko? Hi there. So what I, I guess what I'm looking for is the ability to have live music. It would probably start June, the beginning of June, and it would end at the end of August. So that's I ended last weekend um, on Sunday. I only had music Sunday. So it would have been a week after, I guess, looking at a calendar, two weeks after Labor Day, um, based on some of my staff going back to school and just I just want to address the foreman's complaint I did have a voicemail from Ms. Foreman and I returned the message and the music was turned down I can pull it up and tell you the date and time that I returned the call I did save that and anytime anyone has called and I had offered to give my cell phone I'm sorry I had offered to give my cell phone to folks to call me directly I mean, when you call the diner, I have 16 year old bus girls that don't necessarily have the smarts to know to reach out to me immediately. I try to train them. 16 year olds, they come and go throughout the season. If someone had my cell phone, they could call me directly and I would take care of it just as I did before. And I would you be willing to to proactively just just send a postcard or something to the neighbors and share your cell phone? I certainly would. Certainly would. I mean, I'm not going to mail it out willy nilly, but. No, of course not. No, but I'm saying it's, you know, if, if it, people it, here that would want it, certainly I can send it out or I can have it here and the girls can hand it out if someone calls. I mean, they normally do that anyway. So I'm not trying to make this difficult. I, I really am not. I'm trying to keep my business alive. Okay. Um, Helen. Yeah, so, Georgie, since you're on the line, um, can you explain what happened with the um, having the music from starting at 10, which was in violation of the so that it payment license? Started this year, and it was because, and I don't consciously, I did not consciously say, oh, I'm going to mess with the license commission and go from 11 to 10. It didn't even cross my mind. I had a singer. Lauren, who was the one in the sound study that was available to play from 10 to one on Sundays, we close at two. In my mind, I was like, oh, we can be done at one o'clock. We'll be out of there by 215. You know, I'm done with my three hours. And that's where it started. It was only two Sundays that that happened. And then I've pretty much canceled most of the music that I've had over the summer to a financial loss for myself. You know, Saturdays, if I had music on Saturday instead of or in addition to, it started at 11 and it was done at one. So I've even shortened the hours. So it's not that I'm playing all day. Mm -hmm. And again, it is one or two people, usually with a guitar, a small amp and like an iPad that they sing the words to. I don't even know what that's formally called, but I've never had a large band. I've never had more than two people up there. And when I did, they usually would play underneath the pavilion, not like not outside of it, directly underneath the pavilion in the corner. So I, some of this is, I think is being stretched a little bit. It, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out and I'm trying to figure it out. And that's where I'm at. And can I ask, so just so I understand, because, um, I'll admit I wasn't aware that you were open until eight Monday through Wednesday, but so, and you're still, how, how does it work sharing that space with JJ's? Since that's you know, like, that falls in, so John doesn't open until I think 1130 or 12 on Monday through Sunday. 
Um, obviously, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, I open seven. I open at seven a.m. Saturday is seven thirty. Sunday is eight a.m. Sundays go eight to two. So basically, p folks come for breakfast if they want to come and sit and enjoy music and eat at JJ's. They do that. They just tell us who they want to have a menu from, and we kind of share the space. You know, I don't ever say, oh, my God, no, you're JJ's. You can't sit here and listen to my free music. We've had people sit on the bike path in beach chairs and listen to the music, right. you know, or sit next to the dumpsters at the end of the driveway. So we kind of just share it. I um, outdoor seating on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because we did outdoor dinners or before we did dinners pre-COVID. Um, we did them Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I switched because there isn't a restaurant open in downtown Florence on a Monday or Tuesday. So we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday until 8 p.m. Thursday, Friday, we're out of here at three. Saturday, we're out of here at three. Sunday is at two. Okay. Um, so, and that, but, is, but JJ's is open during that time as well. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I would think. Don't you have some overlap outside? Yeah. Yeah, sure. And again, if I have a server, typically people will either stop in as they're on their way to go to the back to sit under the pavilion and say, hey, there's going to be three of us out there and we're not directly connected to the pavilion like JJ's is. So we just walk through the kitchen and go out back and wait on the tables. But typically in that afternoon, it's mostly JJ's. Okay. So like one o'clock and on it, it becomes more JJ's people want to have a beer or wine or, you know, whatever with a burger or wings and they don't really want an eggs Benedict. You know what I mean? So it, it kind of switches and it's a natural thing. We don't have table tents that say JJ's only or Miss Flo's only, you know, it's not divided up. We right. just, it, it's taken us a few years, but we kind of just work together. Yeah. I will say kudos. That, that sounds very complicated. <laughs> you worked that out. Um, but I guess part of my concern, though, too, is now with this new license, it's a little bit um, fuzzy um, just because we, you know, there's that very strict license with JJ's that it's one day a week outside. Um, the re He can have as much music as he wants inside for the most part. Um, and I, I think that's the same for you. Um, do you do music inside? Sorry to tangent, but do you do you actually have music inside as well? No, because so. When my license started, I had an entertainment license. I was a brand new business owner in middle of 2018. I had an entertainment license. And back then it was called an automatic. I, I have it on my wall, mm -hmm. but it was for my jukeboxes. In my mind, that was the same entertainment license that I needed for outside. Mm -hmm. I, right, I got a call from Annie and he said, you were wrong. You need to apply for a license. And then this all started. And then I had a music license. So I only operated once without a license and then we all got to meet. Yeah, no, I definitely recall all that. Um, I recall all that and I rewatched the video at Brock Back Memories. I and and I was surprised to realize it was 2021 that it's actually been three years since we had those long discussions. But um but with this the application for this new license, um, part of this concern aside from the neighbors, um and music, I mean, you're essentially asking for music outside five times a week and then plus JJ. So that is six times, it's almost every day of the week. And then Thursday, you can go and listen to music on the porch. So there's a lot of, there would be a lot of music and most of it from one venue, but Monday through Wednesday, you know, at a, since you're overlapping with JJ's, it would essentially be, it'd be, I think it'd be confusing because it's almost like we're granting a license to both of you to be, to do outdoor music that often. Does that make, do you see what I I'm... understand what you're saying. I understand. I, and I, I agree, probably would get a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I can say is typically my, this is going to sound very sexist and I'm sorry. I typically have more female people singing. Um, John typically has more of like a, I can't even describe it the type of singer but it's a different type of music mm -hmm. both acoustic with a small amp yes but I guess it's a different type of song song sorry I'm about the audio on and off because the dog this dog will bark because it's dinner time um uh 
so this is a difficult discussion and and it was difficult last time too and so there's a couple things going on i know with the current license there's this confusion of saturday or sunday i will say that my recollection was i'm I feel almost positive that we probably meant one day or the other and that and and you made a statement about that you might have as much as two days a week. I think we interpret that as like it would be Sunday and then the following Saturday. So I think in our minds it was one day on the weekend. Um, I will say that if, when I went back and looked at the audio and I apologize for my dog. Um, we spent a lot of time just talking about the level of music and it, that's understandable because there was so much going on right then about the level of music and about acoustic versus amplified. So I know that we spent the majority of our time on that. Um, so all that being said, I I sort of feel like that ship has sailed. It's water under their bridge. It was interpreted, even though I think our intention was one day on the weekend, you know, it, it was interpreted as two days of the weekend. It has been three years. Um, I don't, recall hearing complaints until recently so although um oh my gosh i'm so sorry <laughs> um until recently uh but it's uh, but now i'm hearing that there were complaints maybe made directly to you so so this is all this stuff is just bringing up concerns again and i think we had them initially too and so and and we're getting now into that he said she said where um it sounds like people did call the restaurant and for whatever reason even if it was you know the 16 year old answering it they were not being heard and responded to so um but, but on and that one phone call and i believe it was from the i can't remember fabio that lives on the corner the music was turned down as soon as he called the gal went out and asked the singer and for the love of my memory, I can't remember who was singing. She turned it down. She turned off her amp and continued for another 45 minutes. It was the end of her set anyway. Then when Ms. Foreman had called again, the music was turned down right away. So I've had two that I'm aware of that have actually called where the girls have come to me. I've asked all of my staff if they've had any issues with people calling. And they said, no, just that the one fellow that called was very aggressive. Um, and he wanted the music turned down or he was going to cut the wires, whatever it was. Again, we are getting into that. He said, she said, I don't want to go down that road. If again, I'm happy to give out my cell phone. You know, I, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. You know, and had I known then what I know now, I probably never would have had music, but now I need the extra income to keep this business going. Things are out of control financially for food and all of that. And insurance is crazy right now. I cannot sustain this business with 60 seats inside with no draw to my other 60 seats outside. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's going to come sit in a parking lot and listen to the crickets and the traffic on Route 9 or the fire department or the police department or the people screaming from the CSO housing and have the eggs Benedict. Doesn't sound appealing to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you have someone come and sing. I'm sorry if it, whoever the singer was that they didn't like. So maybe they tell me what kind of music they want to hear. I'm open to it. I like music, you know, and I'm not doing this because I need an extra thing to do throughout my day, throughout my summer, throughout my winter. I have other things to do. I, I really do. You know, this, I'm happy to listen and pick music, work together. If they want to come over and pick music, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm open to that. I just need to be able to keep this business going and that I need those 60 seats. I paid for them, spent $75,000. I just need some help from you guys. You know, if you want Saturday and Sunday from 11 to one, I'm fine with Saturday and Sunday from 11 to one. Monday, four to seven, fine. You want four to six? John doesn't usually get busy on Mondays until later anyway. You know, so I don't know. I, I, I'm at a loss. I really, I, I am. Mm -hmm. Um. It does say just to clarify, I'm, and this was surprising to me that outdoor there are ninety two seats. Is that actually is that true? Is that it, we have taken out some of the picnic. There's like some larger tables, so it has changed over the years. Um, I I know that I don't seat certain tables out there because I don't have enough staff to do that. 
my kitchen is not that large. Um, I use 60 tables. I use the tables directly underneath the pavilion. I don't tend to use any of the picnic tables or fire pit tables or, you know, what have you. Not fire pit, but couch tables. Mm -hmm. Okay, So 92, it sounds like 92 may not be accurate. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Like it was at 1.92? It, it just seems like a lot. I was surprised that it's like, it's well, we more it than New York. We made it smaller last year when we enclosed it with the fencing on one side on the North North Maple side. And then we put fence on the other side that goes up to um, Florence Bank. And there is fencing that faces the bike path. So it is kind of walled in. Um, and we did make the footprint a lot smaller. So it, I can actually send you what the actual seat count is after right. this and after I clean up my mess in the kitchen. Right, right. Okay. But yes, it would be smaller than 92. Okay. Um, and I fully understand that you need to do what you can do to make a business survive. It's, it's just, I don't know if it's our times. It seems like with this many days and nights of music it's becoming instead of a restaurant that has occasional music it's an entertainment venue that serves food which i think might be part of the issue that's going on for the neighborhood you know i know we've been talking about summer on strong it does to me feel and we will talk more about that after this but um that does feel different because it's multiple restaurants you know in, in a downtown for a limited amount of time um versus one restaurant essentially almost transferring to an entertainment venue and you may take issue with that but the, but to say that the majority of time the days that you're open you're having music does seem well, like quite a bit it's 12 what would it be 12 19 hours total a week well, when I'm yeah I guess I'm just thinking about the number of days and and then and then, you know, as we pointed out, then with JJ's, then it becomes almost every day of the week, there's music outside. And, and I think it was a different thing pre-pandemic when everyone was having their music inside and no one took issue with it unless they lived upstairs. But but once the music moved outside, it's just become a huge issue. And as you know, I mean, it sounds like, you know, I happen to run the Tuesday market and every Tuesday we have music and sometimes you got to deal with it and sometimes you'll get that call. Um, so I'm yeah, so there's a honestly, like almost a little, another level of stress once you interview, introduce music for you, but then obviously for the neighborhood as well. I, um, you know, I'm happy to look at choosing different days. Again, if it's going to keep everyone happy, let's go to a fewer number of days. What would that look like for you? What would you suggest? I guess... I guess like a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, Monday, I don't know, Saturday, Sunday. The only reason I keep coming back to a weeknight is because a four to seven, I invite any of you to come sit in the front of the diner at four to seven, because the amount of traffic that goes by it's, it's super loud. So it wouldn't really necessarily be a, a nuisance to anyone because you're either going to listen to the traffic or you're going to listen to someone strumming a guitar and singing songs. Monday nights tend to be a good night for me, <laughs> staff wise, I guess, um, to do that. I mean, a Saturday, Sunday is actually best based on staffing, based on business need. You know, so I, I'm open. I'm open. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm, I really am not. I, I have another question for you at the last meeting three years ago. Um, then Commissioner Campidelli suggested that the the stage change location. So right now it's on the back of the building facing out into the parking lot. Was that ever experimented with by moving the stage to the backside of the seating area? So it's facing the building. We did try that. Um, and actually, I'm speaking out of turn because I know John had tried that. Having the 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 person people face the building. And then I know there was a lot of music. You could hear a lot down. I have had people facing the fence rather than facing out towards the bike path, facing the fence towards North Maple. That tends to kind of keep it a little bit quieter, I think. Again, I have a decibel meter on my phone. I do walk around and check it. 
if it's someone that I feel like might be is brand new here that doesn't know. Most of the people I have have played here for multiple years. So a couple of the new ones, I've, you know, I've had them move to different spots, but sure. Changing it does, it does help. But now that we have the fence up, it's been completely different. So, I mean, I'm happy to go out there and have someone play music and walk around with my phone, my decibel meter on my phone. Natasha, do you want to recognize Fabio? I know he's had- I see. I, if if no. I recognize neighbors again, it'll be one more time for each, but I don't want to hear a repeat of what's already been said. It's just not constructive and to not be combative with anybody and just share your thought. Okay, so I will first recognize uh, Fabio. I Annie, want to, sorry. you hear me? You... Yes, go ahead. I want to be extremely clear. I feel like Georgina just like accused me of calling, being aggressive and like wanted to cut the wires. I never called the restaurant. I never made any kind of threat. I want this be on the record. I never spoke with her. I never, I don't have her phone number. I did not call the restaurant and made threat. This, uh, I think that's like, has to be on the record and Anne would like to have the recording of this uh, once we are done. This is just like, it really worries me being accused in this way. And uh, I'm like a little shocked that we went from, there are no complaints to somebody try to come and like take down my audio while like change like this much. Like it's, I, I cannot reconcile the two things, but I, Never called the restaurant. I never made any threat. I never spoke with Georgina. I only communicated with the license commission. Part of the reason to completely avoid any misunderstanding. And this is like, I really resent this accusation. I really do. And I want to have it clear. Thank Second you. point uh, to attorney Lane, like you say, we have a compromise to 60 dB. A, I believe it goes over that. B, that's not a compromise, that's a city ordinance. The compromise was one day a week. And another point, and then I think I'm done. When Georgina say like, oh, people sit like uh, with holding chairs like on the bike path to listen to music. It's true, I've yeah. seen them. I live next to it, next to the bike path. That gives you an idea. People can sit on the bike path and enjoy the show because it's that loud. It's not a little bit of sound coming through. I am part of uh, the sound stage that goes there. But yeah, I, I, I did not call. I did not make any threat. I never spoke with you, Georgina, ever. I think of it's like really scary and it really hurts me hearing this uh, unacceptable. I think and we've heard that point and you're on record having said it. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add that hasn't been said? Yeah, when they say like that, the only thing was like before 10 a.m. was this year, that started at 10 a.m. was this year. No, during past year, it was like plenty of days that started before 10 a.m. I try to sleep in the rare time that I can when my child is not screaming and I get waking up early. early. I'm still already up, but like I can hear the music when it starts uh, uh, before 11. And uh, you had at least two that I was present events at night. No, I didn't. Some of them publicized. We're not going to get into this. Like, we're not going to do that. This is like. Okay, Fabio, it's been said, so we're not going to go back to it. We're not going to have a back and forth. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Um, the foreman's, if you have something to add that hasn't already been said, I will recognize you. Um, I'll hold on one second. You're still muted. Okay. Thank you. I will be brief given the hour. Um, first of all, when Ms. Brunton said that the music needs to be louder than the traffic. I think that's an important point to take into consideration. The traffic is barely audible from our house, but the music certainly is. Um, secondly, in response to the concern about whether the stipulations of the license are being followed, I have a photograph. I don't know that it's really gonna be visible for you. Um, it's a nicely professionally printed vinyl sign, Miss mm -hmm. Florence yes. Steiner. It says live music every Sunday at 10 a.m. Yep, we've seen the sign. 
Okay, thank you. So I just wanted to point out that that was not just a, a one-off, that was okay. consistent. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Helen, are you ready for discussion? Um, uh, well, I guess, and, I, and maybe this is for our discussion because there is, I'm still unclear on this thing about Sundays. Um, and if that's been decided on the city level, if that's something that essentially has been decided for us. And and that can be part of our discussion after we close hearing, if you like. Yeah, I mean, unless Annie has anything you want to add as part of the hearing from, I mean, my understanding is it's a state statute and we only learned of it. It wasn't like we just pulled this as a surprise, like let's make people unhappy. We just figured this out recently. Um, the can you speak any to the license at Brewster? I I can't. That is um, an obvious error, as it was this. Um, and Brewster doesn't have any music at that hour. Outside. No, I mean, are we talking about the brewery? We're talking about the other license that his so Miss Flows was inadvertently given a license for before one p.m. on Sunday, and then there was one other. And was it the brewery outside? Uh, I know that their license was just amended for bands on Brewster, but that was the summer and that was 6 to 8 p.m. on Thursdays. Um, I, I don't have every entertainment license memorized. I don't I don't I don't know what they have. Um, but if it is before one, then it will need to be amended because yep. entertainment cannot start before 1 p.m. on Sundays in Massachusetts. Okay. Okay. Uh, Attorney Lane, did you want to add one final comment? No? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, and again, I, I'm just going off the, the minutes from May 15th, uh, 2024. And um, uh, Brewster Court Pub Incorporated did apply for and, wa and was granted the ability to have music from noon on Sunday, noon to 8 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, all we're asking for yeah. is a is a consistent application. Absolutely, of the law. yeah, absolutely, and I, and I understand. I mean, absolutely, no disrespect with that. Yeah, um, yeah, that was. I, that I, was... I, I, good, sorry, uh, th that's all. Um, just consistent application of the law. I mean, I understand how tense this is. Uh, it seemed equally as tense on uh, Strong Avenue discussion as well. Um, I, I just. Uh, I hope that Ms. Florence Diner will be afforded whatever rights and opportunities other restaurants in the city of Northampton are afforded, regardless of where they are. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, I mean, to that, because I've been thinking about it, aside from Summer on Strong, which I think is a different beast, um, are there, I don't think there are any other restaurants that are doing outdoor music more than one night in a week. Is that um, for restaurants, I also don't think there are. The the other multiple evening licenses are all applied to city events. So city-sponsored events. Summer on Strong is a city-sponsored event. Um, the Brewster is a city-sponsored event. And it's once a week. And it's once a week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just yeah. yeah, for my clarification and for others. And so um, I wanna, so a couple things before we close it um, to ask um, Georgie, because there's, so two things, cause I asked about is, do you do indoor music? And it sounds like, no, it's really just the jukeboxes. Um, just because in this license application, it says inside diner during cooler months. And I just wanna know if that's, if there actually is live music inside ever. I don't know if you're still on the call. I'm sorry. You want me to unmute? unmute. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure. Do you mind? I would like to have music inside if I could. I didn't. So I was really confused when I was filling it out because I didn't know if I could have music inside or outside or it was two applications. So I filled everything out. So, okay. yes, I would like to be able to have music inside. Okay. You know, again, someone with a guitar in the corner of the diner. I'm not sure if you've ever been in here. You know, I. Is that okay? No. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I we love it inside. 
something. Awesome. Okay. I'm and sure. Fact, everything. In fact, that's what that was a lot of talking to John at JJ's was all the music you want inside would be fabulous. Yes. And, um, and if so, yeah. see more see people, I would. Yeah. You know, add another floor, I would. Yeah. Um, and then there is this issue because now we've made so many designations of the type of music and it came specifically out of this because of it. Um, so realistically, it seems like you would you do want to check off amplified, correct? And I know and and I think there's this misconception that amplified means a rock concert, but as we've said, it's like essentially even the acoustic music and acoustic duos that you have are, are they are having some level of amplification amplification, right? Yeah, and I believe I thought I checked that off that it was amplified. Okay. I'm not seeing it on the copy that I got. Um <laughs> But okay. yes, they do have one of those small, I mean, I can send you the pictures of what they bring with them. Right. But the, yeah, like a small PA system, probably. Yeah. It's just one. No one ever brings more than one. Okay. Um, and then DJ, you did not check and that is accurate that you would not want a DJ? No, okay. no. I just want to entertain. Okay. And then I guess one last question, just to clarify this for the neighbors and everything else, because there's this, and and I don't want to continue that he said, she said, but I'm, I realize I'm yeah. going to be part of the problem. But this thing with the 10 a.m., because you uh, suggested that it was just one of your players, I, was that she was going to do it, and then you got this vinyl sign that, made up. Of so that's how it started, because she was like, let's do 10 a.m. We can be in and done. And in my mind, I said yes. And I was wrong. Okay. And I I got signs printed up well before, you know, the that next Sunday. I mean, the collective copies is where I get my printing done, which is right next door. Mm -hmm. So they're no longer out there. I right. mean, and it stopped. It was two. Right. It might have even been one Sunday because the second Sunday rained. Okay. And when that was brought to your attention, you did stop the 10 a.m. Immediately. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So we ready for discussion? I think so. Okay. Then I will make a motion to close the public hearing. To you, I'm sorry to interrupt a motion, sure. but to explain to the people here that what this means is that when we close the public hearing, yes. we are discussing. We are talking to each yeah. other. Yes, it's just for Helen and I to have our discussion and then our vote. We will not reopen the public hearing. I think we've heard, we've heard from everybody. All right, great, understood. Then I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And I think Jennifer, I think I include you in this because you're still part of the meeting. So you would just. Yes. No, <laughs> you abstain. Already oh, abstained. I'm abstaining again. She abstains because she knows she was the one that knew when they played it at like 90 decibels. Remember? But can you? First I will. Meeting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mute. Okay. So Helen. Yes. I normally lead the initial discussion after these hearings and I'm, I don't want to put you in the hot seat, but I would like to hear your thoughts first because I don't want anything I say to be construed as influential or trying to influence the direction we go in. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I hate trying to direct a business and what they can and can't do, but as we know, the outdoor entertainment has become so troublesome um for so many for so long <laughs> since the pandemic we can put a date on it um right. um and and i'm encouraged to hear that there is the opportunity to pay to play music inside that there could be the space to have some indoor music um i guess my thought right now would be um because of the state ordinance Sunday is essentially off the table because I believe they close at two so one to two is not going to be valuable um to her business um and and my thought right now is that it could be Saturday 11 to 3 and then one weekday 
from four to seven. And I don't know if we stipulate what weekday or um, or if it says, or if that's how it reads, like one one weekday, either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, 4 to 7 p.m. I understand that the neighbors would probably want to know that it's going to be every Monday or whatever it is. Um, so I guess it's within our purview to, to do that as well. Um, this is also like it's always a testing period, as was apparently the last three years, you know, um, I wish all those musicians who were on the call earlier could all get together and make the perfect venue that there wouldn't be music. I, I really appreciated that discussion, that they understood yeah. that there are ways to control the music. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that needs to be an ongoing part of it because obviously there's still some issues with the sound mitigation. Um, but uh, anyway, so I guess I'll stop there. So, so my direction that I would go is to say Saturday, 11 to three, and either stipulate a weekday or just say one 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 weeknight from four to seven. Okay. Just because, you know, then we have we still, I mean, recognizing that that's still three three days of music a week from that location. And and sorry, in addition to that, I would say from June to August. June first to August to whatever it is, 30th, 31st. Um, and for indoors. Would you be open to unlimited inside year round? Yeah, I would think. Um, thank you for taking the hot seat for a minute. Yeah. Um, I feel, and I remember this from three years ago when we were having this discussion, part of this issue. And I remember I voted against this entertainment license. And one of the reasons for that, it wasn't the business having entertainment. It was the shared pavilion having two businesses use it for entertainment and how, and we were having so much trouble with the sound and communication at the time, which I'm, I'm really delighted to hear that um, there's some, that's been sorted out and that's working for people for the music that JJ's having, that's awesome. Um, but that is something that I have in mind in terms of the number of nights to grant the licenses. I think it's important. I think it's okay to try and achieve some sort of balance between the number of evenings and it's not her business or his business, just, just the number of evenings period where there is the entertainment. Um, I think it is a different animal from downtown Northampton. The multiple nights of music in those various places, as I've already said, are, are event city sponsored events and the downtown commercial district. Yes, there are plenty of residences down there, but it's densely commercial versus residential, whereas in Florence, we're densely residential versus some commercial. And if anybody's driven, which I'm sure we all have driven through Florence recently, I know three of us live here, um, there's amazing things happening in the center of Florence. And I'm really excited for the future of Florence. There's new businesses opening, there's buildings getting painted, it's building, you know, more residences being built. Um, I think that the future for the center of Florence is really bright, but I don't think it's the same as downtown Northampton. And part of our responsibility is to um, to recognize that we can't apply the same brush to every single thing. Um, although consistency is important, applying the rules to pe the same people is important. Um, enforcement of all of these licenses is really difficult because we're not enforcers. We're, you know, we, we have these meetings, we will hear complaints or we won't hear complaints or something will get noticed and brought to our attention. And then we have to deal with it. But, um, you know, we were criticized at, one of our that last meeting three years ago, Helen and I, for not going to listen to the music to experience what was happening. It's you know it's a tough it's a tough situation in the enforcement question. So we rely on the license holders to adhere to the terms of the license. So I want to get um, I want however this license is written to be really crystal clear, and that's that's for the benefit of the license holder and every license moving forward. Um, particularly for the entertainment needs to be crystal clear for folks. And so this one will be um, the Sunday thing, you know, we'll go through those licenses. And that was a complete accidental oversight that we had a problem. I mean, there probably isn't more than just this one in the Brewster written for Sundays, but we'll just make that our task in the next couple months to make sure that those licenses are amended to reflect the state statute. But all of that said, um, I 
agree with your position in terms of the um, allowing the Saturday license, Sunday due to the statute and the time of business hours would be off the table. One of the evenings, the Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I think it should be, I, I'm sure it would be nice to know when the music is happening, but at the same time, I don't feel like we should be telling a business owner when they can do that. I think she should have some flexibility because um, that gives her flexibility around who she's who she's booking to play based on their availability on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Um, so I would be open to that arrangement and absolutely 100% unlimited indoor entertainment year round. And um, your dates of June 1st through the through August 30th, I think makes sense to have on the license. Okay. I think that all sounds reasonable. I'm sure both the neighbors and the business owner may not agree, but um, we're, we're just now, it's been a long history of all this. So we're trying to just balance everything that we possibly can um, to, to help maintain our community <laughs> um, and business. And I hope that, I mean, uh, anyway, of course, of course we want Miss Flows to stay in business. I hope that it's not a hundred percent pinching on having music or not. Um, so, uh, Okay, at this point, is it a motion then, Annie, with specifics of, so so I guess the question of the, the current license, there is the rest of, the, we're, we're saying that's essentially done, outdoor entertainment is done, so is it kind of a moot point? Do we need to say anything about the current license? I don't think so, because doesn't the application supersede, if in approving the application, does that supersede the existing license? Because it's an amendment, right? Right. Or no, it was a new application. It was a new application, but I think you're right, Natasha, that it it takes the place of the existing license. Okay. Okay. Um, so then is, is the motion the specific... I mean, there's this application in front of us. Do we have to go through denying or do we say we're, we are accepting with all of these changes that we're about to do? How does how does that go? I think you can just you can just lay out what you just talked about and what you want to see on the license. And then. And then, yeah, so is it an actual motion or is it like we are communicating this and then a new application is submitted? No, it's a motion. You're amending the the application. Okay. So would it be something like approving the application with the following amendments? Is that the language to use? I don't want this to come up and bite us in, in, um, <laughs> in legal language. You can, I think it, it could be that, or it could be that you, um, that you, um, move to approve the entertainment license for Miss Florence Diner to include and then lay out everything you talked about. To include the following amendments. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then just um, for clarification, Natasha, are we checking the amplified box? Because I think realistically it is amplified. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm hesitant to check the amplified box out of so that we don't create a gray area in the future for somebody to say that means we can have amplified bands because that's not what we're saying. It's there's the limited means of of acoustic music being amplified via microphone and things like that based on that whole discussion before. So I think the reason we have that amplified box there is for a separate kind of entertainment. Okay. I know we worked so hard on it, but there's, yeah. Okay, no. so I will not uh, open that can of worms. We will keep that as is. Um, I mean, okay. the, the, the based on the type of music that she outlines that she's having. So the, the level of acoustic slash some amplification should support what her description of proposed entertainment is. Mm -hmm. She says in here, live acoustic, single duo, musical acts, not bands, so. Okay, okay. Um, and then also um, in this thing about the outdoor seating, is that something that we have to address now or just say that will be amended by the 
there's no similarity. In, in terms of the the number of seats? Uh, well, yeah, because the outdoor seats, because I was I was surprised by the 92, but it sounds yeah. like she's saying it actually may not be 92, but since everything should probably be right on the license. Yeah, I mean, maybe just in the motion, ask for an updated outdoor chart reflecting the current number of seats. Okay. Okay. I mean, we've done that in the past, approved something and just asked for the chart to be submitted. Okay. All right, should I give this a shot? Sorry, it's gonna be lengthy. Well, it has in advance. At least the dog is under control. You've okay. got this. Okay, I make a motion to approve uh, the entertainment license application submitted by Ms. Florence Diner with the following amendments. Um, indoor entertainment is allowed during the hours of operation. Um, outdoor entertainment will be allowed from June 1st through August 30th. Um, on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and one afternoon per week from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, and we will- On Monday, Tuesday. Oh, on, okay. I was trying to leave it even open for things change, but on my, okay. So one afternoon a week from 4 to 7 p.m. on either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, we, uh, um, that's what was done last time, the or, and it was interpreted oh, differently. God. So what, oh my <laughs> Lord, please, let's not get there. <laughs> so what, one day on a Monday, Tuesday, or a Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what, <laughs> so can you back me up to where I am? So, so Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and one day day each week on a Monday or I'm so afraid of that word now Monday, Monday Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon from 4 to 7 p.m. that's why I was going to say one day per week like, wow you could, say, really <laughs> you could say to equal <laughs> you could say to equal two days yeah yes to equal two days each week oh my god to equal a total of two days each one week. of them being a saturday i mean if we really want to <laughs> i mean so well that's what i was saying one weekday i mean i think right right, right. well just, i don't think she's open thursday evenings i think the monday oh. tuesday wednesday are just the nights she's open oh, yeah. Maybe. so according anyway. to according to the commonwealth a weekday includes a saturday oh good lord thank you for that okay yeah. So, okay, so Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And one other, oh my God, um, afternoon, weekday afternoon from 4 to 7 p.m. Weekday afternoons can be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I Now I'm just- Well, well weekdays, yeah. it can include a Saturday. So I think it- I Right, think that's it, why I'm, that's why, can we, sorry to interrupt you, but can we say from Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. plus one other weekday? But, you know what I mean? Because I'm saying it's Saturday. Okay, okay. Know. So are we taking out Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? Oh my God, I don't know. Do you, do you think it's important, Natasha? I mean- Well, I mean, I think she- yeah. Put it in the application because those are the days that she's open in the evenings and JJ's got Fridays. If you want to leave it so that if she has the flexibility, if she starts to be open Thursday nights. I guess I that's what I'm up. saying. I think, I think like ultimately whatever language we have to do to say she can do music from Saturday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yep. And then one other weekday um, from 4 to 7 p.m. And I'm, now I'm yeah. so tangled. I'm not, where are we? Sorry I'm for fine taking any. So outdoor entertainment will be allowed June 1st through August 30th on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and one other weekday afternoon from 4 to 7 p.m. to equal a total of two days each week, one of them being a Saturday. Beautiful. I mean, like, I feel like we cross it. I don't know if we can get a thumbs up from attorney Lane. <laughs> 
It'll be a qualified thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right. It's <laughs> like, that's good. And I'm, now I'm going to tear it apart. I'm, I, right, right. Except yes, for the rest yes. of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, all right. Anyway. Okay. And then, um, and then we will also be seeking an updated um, plan for the outdoor seating to be included in this application. Ooh. Or it's contingent upon receiving an updated plan for the outdoor seating. Okay. Oh. Motion made? Yes. Okay, then I second that motion. And I don't I don't know if we need Jennifer in here to abstain. I guess we should because we included her before. Yeah. Might as well, yeah. Um Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. I abstain. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for that. That was a good conversation. I know the outcome's not what all parties wanted, but I think it's balanced as it is and we'll take it from here with hopefully good better open communication between all of the neighbors and businesses and i i just want to say i apologize i'm sorry i because i know we were laughing during that and i do not want to make light of this i understand how important it is to everyone it's just yeah i think of the stress reliever of what we've been through um on this journey in this this location so yeah all right then we will move on to item 15, which is a commissioner discussion about Summer on Strong entertain, Entertainment and Music. So we, we heard from many people during public comment, um, and Annie also sent us a number of letters of support that came from the community. There might have been a couple um, letters from people who also spoke tonight, but I feel a little bad because I, I hope people don't think that Summer on Strong is at risk. The, that itself isn't us. So we're just the entertainment piece of, of that event. Um, this year, they did go from, I think, four nights last year, or maybe three nights up to the five nights. And I think that was a, a learning experience for everybody. And I really appreciated the comments of um, some of the musicians talking about the curating of the type of music. And I think that's helpful for all entertainment licenses out there is to have appropriate curating for dinner time music. Um, so that was helpful to hear. And it it's it sounded like the event itself has grown to the point where they do need that collaborative committee to um, kind of harness it and move it forward. But that's also outside of our purview. But I look forward to seeing what they do. And um, for our purposes, we really just have to wait until an application comes in for next year's event and then have this discussion again based on uh, everything that we heard tonight. Is there anything, either of you, or your thoughts that you might have about it? I guess just a general comment, I um, just to echo what you said earlier, that I really appreciated how civil that conversation was. I really mm -hmm. appreciated that there were musicians coming forward who with the with the probably the most knowledge of how to, how to control music levels. Um, I do hope that something can be done in the future. I do feel for the business that is, uh, you know, has the music right out front. I get that. Um, yeah. And and we have such wonderful talent in this community. I think that's part of the issue is like we are able to do music essentially seven days a week, you know, with bands on Brewster, Tuesday Market, the five days at some right. restaurant because there's so much talent around here. And and I certainly think that needs to be encouraged and, and utilized in a way that brings people to downtown Northampton. But obviously we have to balance all these issues. And I I love that there were musicians essentially saying we can help. And, and I yeah. think that could be a great solution because we know historically we've struggled with this whole amplified music and turning it down and how do we control levels and they're the people who know so if a group of them could get involved you know I think that would be beautiful so yeah agreed Jennifer did you want to add anything yes I just want to emphasize the call for a committee I just want to be on the record just I I hope that that com committee is pursued because it sounds like if it's inclusive and the musicians um, sound very willing and able to participate, it just sounds like the a strong committee will will have the accountability that I think will check 
off the boxes that yeah. will address the concerns that will uh, curate the music, perhaps relocate the stage. I mean, this is just too much for one person. It's it's become such a great event that I just I'm hopeful that that committee um, idea is pursued, and I yeah. I just feel like that could help move the challenges into the right direction for everyone involved. Yep, agreed. All right, shall we move on? 16, approval of minutes. Uh, Jennifer, would you like to make a motion for July 17th and August 29th, 2024? Yes, I put forward a motion to approve the minutes as detailed on item number 16 of the agenda for July 17th, 2024 and August 29th, 2024. I second. Uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. I'm staying. And Jennifer. Yes. Excellent. Okay, new business. We do have some new business. We do. Can I tell her? You can, <laughs> you can, you can say the words. I can't say it. You might have, you might have already heard. I don't know, but um, we do, we did find a new license commissioner. Uh, oh. So you are off the hook, unfortunately. Unfortunately, okay, your last meeting. We're <laughs> sad to see you go. Uh, yeah, we will miss uh, you terribly. And um, you know, a really bird may have whispered in my ear who that is. Um, is that something that should be announced or, or? Uh, yeah, she's on the council agenda for tomorrow's city council meeting, so it's public. So yes, Amy Kaylane. So fantastic. I have yes. to say, so I appreciate it, all of you so much. Thank you for covering the last two meetings without me, for example. Um, and I think that's so good. As you know, I was, I had reservations about stepping off, but now I feel like the commission is in really great hands and I'm very happy. And thank you for doing that search and whatever yeah. you had to do to get Amy to say yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Someday I'd like to know what that was. Just had, to, just had to ask, I'm sure. Apparently it wasn't a, it wasn't an arm twist. She was just glad to work with uh, the city uh, again. And that's great. I think she yeah. will be perfect. A great yeah, she will. I agree. Um Helen, but you also have been perfect. And it's been an absolute pleasure for me to work with you in this capacity because I didn't know you before and now I do, and that's great. And you've been so steady and thorough and thoughtful and brought a lot of different perspectives to all the conversations we have. And I just also want to acknowledge there was a long time. It was just the two of us a long time. So there was some very heavy lifting during the COVID years and beyond. And um, you should be commended for, for all of that. So thank you. Well, thank you. That is sweet. I appreciated your lead leadership through all of that. And Annie, um, We've said it so many times, we could not do this job without you. Or this, sorry, this job, this volunteer position without you. <laughs> That's, you guys yeah. make it easy. Oh. I appreciate you. Right. Any other new business? Uh, Jennifer was going to say something. Don't oh, yes. Jennifer off. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, Helen. I'll see you at the Tuesday market, but I just wanted, yes, I wanted to thank you here. All right. Well, You're thank you for joining me. And yes, I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you right back. <laughs> Excellent. Anything else? Nope. Do I get nope. to make this motion? Well, actually, so oh. <laughs> the only thing is, I don't know. I mean, so, so Amy's um, appointment is subject to approval of the city council and then the um subcommittee of the council and then it goes back to council so um i don't know if she'll be a oh, what are you about to say by the <laughs> october meeting i but i don't i don't know i mean i'm sure there's going to be nothing on the agenda that is going to cause anybody to need to recuse themselves so Ooh, you um, just said it now, now it'll thing? happen now that you've said that but okay is the <laughs> october meeting is that would that be the 16th? I think, yeah, the third Wednesday. Okay. So, um, um, I'll, I'm having surgery the first week of October, but I'll be sure to be off narcotics by the 16th. That'll be my goal. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I guess, 
I guess this is your last meeting unless some something horrible happens. <laughs> okay, unless it isn't. Okay, great. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you for that assurance. <laughs> um, and we never had Click show up, which is oh oh yeah oh gosh. Um, Did we whip back to that because you know this is an event so that happened last year also, and it is um, you know Click Workspace has done the um. It is exactly the same type of stuff that they have done at Click Workspace before, where they have offered wine and beer. And this is a informational discussion amongst realtors and attorneys. Um, I, based on we've approved this event in the past, and this is absolutely not their first time hosting this type of thing, I have no problem approving this in their absence if the other commissioners are okay. Yes, I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. I feel the same way. Okay. Yeah. Great. Then we're going to jump back to the application for short term liquor license for Click Workspace Incorporated at nine and a half Market Street. This is for the 2024 Hampshire County Real Estate Forum at Better Closings, Thursday, October 17th, 530 to 730. And they are seeking a wine and malt. And I see no reason to not approve this based on their history with us and um this is a repeat event. Agree. Shall I do it? Unless you have any objections, Jennifer, are you okay? No objections. Nope. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Um. Uh. I make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Click Workspace as detailed in item eleven on the agenda. Second. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. I don't know why I'm going backwards? Helen. Yes. And Natasha. Yes. Okay, Helen, do you want to do the honors? Do um, I make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Second. Um, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Thank you, everybody. That was a long meeting. That well done. Long meeting. Thank you so much.